changes. When atomic fire consumed the earth, those who survived did so in great underground vaults. When they opened, their inhabitants set out across the ruins of the old world to build new societies, establishing villages, forming tribes. As decades passed, what had been the American Southwest united beneath the flag of the new California Republic, dedicated to old world values of democracy and the rule of law. As the Republic grew, so did its needs. Scouts spread east, seeking territory and wealth in the dry and merciless expanse of the Mojave Desert. They returned with tales of a city untouched by the warheads that had scorched the rest of the world and a great wall spanning the Colorado River. The NCR mobilized its army and sent it east to occupy Hoover Dam and restore it to working condition. But across the Colorado, another society had arisen under a different flag. A vast army of slaves forged from the conquest of 86 tribes, Caesar's Legion. Four years have passed since the Republic held the dam, just barely, against the Legion's onslaught. The Legion did not retreat. Across the river, it gathers strength. Campfires burn, training drums beat. Through it all, the New Vegas Strip has stayed open for business, under the control of its mysterious overseer, Mr. House and his army of rehabilitated tribals and police robots. You are a courier, hired by the Mojave Express to deliver a package to the New Vegas Strip. What seemed like a simple delivery job has taken a turn for the worse. You got what you were after, so pay up. You're crying in the rain, Pally. Guess who's waking up over here? Time to cash out. Will you get it over with? Maybe cons kill people without looking them in the face. But I ain't a fink, dig? You've made your last delivery, kid. Sorry you got twisted up in this scene. From where you're kneeling must seem like an 18 karat run of bad luck. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start.
Take pride in my needlework, but you'd better tell me if I left anything out of place. How'd I do? Stuff that mattered. Okay, no sense keeping you in bed anymore. Let's see if we can get you on your feet. Good. Why don't you walk down to the end of the room, over by that vigor tester machine there? Take it slow now, it ain't a race.
Sorry, little lady. I fixed up your head as best I knew how. Guess I missed a spot. Well, we know your vitals are good. But that don't mean them bullets didn't leave you nutter than a bighorn and drop it. What do you say you take a seat in my couch and we go through a couple of questions? See if your dogs are still barking. All right. I'm gonna say a word. I want you to say the first thing that comes to mind. Dog. House. Night. Bandit. Light. Mother. Okay, now I got a few statements. I want you to tell me how much they sound like something you'd say. First one, conflict just ain't in my nature. I ain't given to relying on others for support. I'm slow to embrace new ideas. I charge in to deal with my problems head on. Almost done here. What do you say you have a look at this? Tell me what you see. Okay. How about this one? Last one. Well, that's all she wrote. I don't have nothing to compare it to, so maybe you'd better just have a look at the results. See if it all seems right to you. Just a formality. Ain't like I expect to find you got a family history of getting shot in the head.
Here, these are yours. It was all you had on you when you was brought in. I hope you don't mind, but I gave the note a look. I thought it might help me find a next of kin, but it was just something about a platinum chip. Well, if you're heading back out there, you ought to have this. They call it a Pip-Boy. I grew up in one of them vaults they made before the war. We all got one. Ain't much use to me now, but you might want such a thing after what you've been through. I know what it's like having something taken from you. And put this on too, so the locals don't pick on you for lack and modesty. It was my wife's. I think she was about your size, and she hardly wore it after we left the vault. Felt it was too brazen. You should talk to Sunny Smiles before you leave town. She can help you learn to fend for yourself in the desert. She'll likely be at the saloon. I reckon some of the other folks at the saloon might be able to help you out too. And the metal fella, Victor, who pulled you out of your grave. Anyway, you ever get hurt out there, you come right back. I'll fix you up. But try not to get killed anymore. Hey, partner, might I say you're looking fit as a fiddle? I'm a Securitron, Robco Security Model 2060B. If you ever see any of my brothers, tell them Victor says howdy. Don't mention it. 
I'm always ready to lend a helping hand to a stranger in need. I was out for a stroll that night when I heard the commotion up the old bone orchard. Saw what looked like a bunch of bad eggs, so I laid low. Once they'd run off, I dug you up to see if you were still kicking. Turns out you were, so I hauled you off to the dock right quick. Can't say that I'm familiar with the rascals. Some of the fine folks in town might be able to help you out with that. I moseyed into town, oh, 10, 15 years ago. Before that, I, mm, I can't quite seem to recall. Odd. Anyway, it's a right peaceful town, and I reckon it gets as fine a place to settle as any. Happy trails! You must be the one Doc Mitchell was patching up. The way I heard it, I didn't think you'd be walking out of that office. I've got plenty of supplies for sale. Even got some weapon mods and special ammo. Well worth the caps if you ask me. If you're hurting for caps, I've also got boxes of surplus ammo in the miscellaneous section. They're not great, but you get what you pay for. The leader was a New Vegas type. Typical city boy. He had a bunch of great cons with him, probably hired guns. The great cons normally stay in their own territory way up northwest, on account of them being enemies with the NCR. Twice. Both times I drank a lot of liquor and lost most of my caps at the card tables. In that order, now that I think about it. If you ever get to New Vegas, be sure to visit Gamora. It's the best casino in the city. You won't regret it. Word of advice. Behave. Between the NCR military police and Mr. House's robots, you don't want to be causing trouble on the Strip. They're tough sons of bitches. Mean, but not crazy. They'll leave you alone unless you got something they want. The Great Cons deal in illegal chems. There's a good chance that most chems you come across were made by Great Cons. I'm afraid I don't know much myself. Mr. House has got his own casino. Lucky 38, but nobody goes in or out except his robots. The other casinos follow Mr. House's rules, so I guess that makes him the leader of New Vegas. As far as I know, nobody's ever laid eyes on the guy. I think that robot who pulled you out of the dirt belongs to Mr. House. If Mr. House is looking after you, it's got to be a good thing, right? Weapon mods are things like silencers, scopes, bigger magazines. Special ammo includes things like armor-piercing bullets, which don't hurt the target as much, but let you punch through armor easier. There's also hollow-point bullets, which have the opposite effect. You can kill unarmored targets easier, but they don't do shit against armor. Can do. Another satisfied customer.
can stay. Don't worry, she won't bite unless I tell her to. Sure can. Take the road southeast out of town till it hits the freeway. Prim is the town with a roller coaster straight south. Can't miss it. NCR patrols do a good job of keeping the highway clear, but I'd keep your gun where you can reach it easily. You never know who you'll run into. Off the road, you'll probably start running into hostile wildlife. My advice would be to stick to the highway when you can. Not in good springs, no. But if you're up for a little scavenging, there's always the schoolhouse. Most of what's in there is junk, but there's this old safe that even Easy Pete wasn't able to crack with dynamite. If you want to take a shot at it, take these. If the lock's too much for you to handle, reading through the magazine might give you the edge you need. You'll need those to pick the lock. Be careful, though. Put too much pressure on them, and they'll snap. Always happy to help someone down on their luck. I hunt geckos, mostly. The meat's pretty good, and I can always find a buyer for the hides. I also help keep the town clear of rat scorpions and coyotes. Not many people live in good springs, so wildlife is always creeping in. Yeah, I guess there's a thing or two I could show you. Sounds like you need all the help you can get after what they done to you. Meet me outside, behind the saloon. Everything all right? Now, see the sarsaparilla bottles on the fence there? Take this and try to hit a couple of them. That's the right idea. Look, try crouching down and staying safe. Nice shot. Well, that's a start. But I don't reckon you came to me to learn to fight sarsaparilla bottles. Tell you what. I gotta go chase geckos away from our water supply anyway. Darn critters are attracted to it. Why don't you come along? Follow me. It's just down to the southeast a short ways. Hear that up on the ridge behind me there? We got some geckos that clear out. Bunch of little monsters is what they are. Seems like Doc Mitchell treats more gecko bites than anything else. Let's see if we can get a little closer. If we move quietly, we can get the jump on them. More likely to hit something vital that way. Okay, you're on. Go give him hell.
See? You're getting the hang of it. There's two more wells that still need clearing. You want, you can come along. It'd be worth a few caps to me. Shouldn't take more than a couple minutes, especially with two of us. Come with me. Now that was some good work. Even got a little exciting there at the end. Here's a little spending money for the trouble. One more thing I wanted to show you. Thought I might teach you about living off the land and making useful things for yourself. Interested? All right then. We'll need a couple ingredients to get started. Gonna want some Xander root and a Brock flower. Let me think now. I know I've seen Brock flowers growing up at the graveyard and I seem to remember there being Xander root over by the schoolhouse. Bring those on back to me, and we'll get cooking.
Okay, where the hell do you think you're going? Prim is off limits. Some convicts from the prison up the road have taken over the town. Everyone inside is either dead or in hiding. What's more, there are two tribes of raiders causing trouble in this area as well. You'd be safer heading back up to Good Springs. We'd love to, but they don't fall under NCR jurisdiction. Even if they did, we're in no shape to protect them. We don't have the equipment to take out the convicts. And even if we did, we need some extra hands for backup. You should talk to Lieutenant Hayes. He's in a tent down the road. Just stay on the west side of the overpass if you don't want to get shot. I'm Lieutenant Hayes of the New California Republic Army, 5th Battalion, 1st Company. What's your business? We were sent out here to hold back the tide of convicts from the correctional facility. As you can probably tell, we aren't doing the kind of job we could be doing. Not much. They've taken to calling themselves powder gangers, mostly because they've taken to using the explosives meant to clear boulders as weapons. They got organized faster than I would have thought, most of them at least. Thankfully, the small group in town here seemed to have split off from the main force, so they aren't getting anything in the way of support. Most people just call it NCRCF. That's NCR Correctional Facility. A little bit ago, the convicts there staged a coup, killed the guards that weren't able to escape, and have been ransacking the area since then. The mission isn't a problem. The problem is with supplies. Convicts are better armed and organized than our intel initially suggested. I'm trying to get some reinforcements here, maybe some guns with some firepower, but shit. Things are just going slow. I have some free time. Ask away. Ma'am? We won't go quiet.
I don't know what it was brought you to Prim, youngster, but you might want to rethink your plans. Town's gone to hell. Johnson Nash is my name. Husband to Ruby Nash. Lived in Prim going on eight years now, thick and thin. I'm a trader primarily, for what it's worth with things like they are. I also run the local Mojave Express outpost. Well, I don't got any work right now, sorry to say. I'll tell you whatever I can. You have a delivery order you can show me? Oh, so you're talking about one of them packages. That job had strange written all over it, but we couldn't turn down the caps. That cowboy robot had us hire six couriers. Each was carrying something a little different. Pair of dice, chess piece, that kind of stuff. Last word I have in the office, it looked like payment had been received for the other five jobs. Guess it was just your chip that didn't make it. First deadbeat we hired to do the job, canceled. Hope a storm from the divide skins him alive. Well, that's where you came in. Yeah, got this look when he saw you next down on the courier list. His expression turned right around, asked me if your name was for real. I said, sure as lack of rain, you were still kicking. Then he turned down the job, just like that. I asked if he was sure it was good money. No, let Courier 6 carry the package, that's what he said. Like the Mojave'd sort you out or something. Then he just up and walked out. Well, now that you mentioned it, a few nights back, one of the townies was out scavenging for supplies. He said he saw a fellow with a daisy suit come through with some of them great con misfits. They was talking about a chip. Well, for that, your best bet is going to be talking to Deputy Beagle. Since they came to town, he was keeping a good bit of notes on him, and he was slinking around Bison Steve when your pretty boy friend came through. He may have heard where they were going. I guess. A Beagle had some notes he was taking while he was eavesdropping around the Potter gangsters. He'll be your best source of information on that subject. Sure, have a look. Thanks. Sure, I'll tell you what I know.
Anybody there? I don't suppose you came here to rescue me. I'd cross my fingers, but my hands are numb. Why, yes I am. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm in a bit of a predicament here. I'd be most appreciative if you'd set me free. My good lady, I believe I may have some information that would prove useful. If you would just untie my hands, I'd be more than happy to share that information I have with you. Well, you look to be a trustworthy sort. Okay, I'll tell you what I know. I overheard them saying that they're on their way to Novak. If you want to follow them, I strongly suggest that you follow the road through Nipton. There are a lot of dangerous things out in the desert. And you won't have me with you to protect you, as I need to stay here and keep Prim safe. It would be so very delightful if you set me free. Oh, that's just marvelous. I think I'll be making my way outside now. The air is a little close in here. Oh, why, uh, of course. I'd never let you fight my kidnappers with my help, but without it. You lead the way. Well, that was quite an adventure. We taught those convicts a thing or two, didn't we? Breaking myself out of a hostage situation, not to diminish your role in it, of course, but it was quite thrilling. Problem is, there's still no law in Prim. What are we to do the next time ruffians menace us and hold us hostage? Ah, yes. My memory is much clearer now that I'm free from my bondage. I was uh, performing recon, gathering information on some of the powder gangers, when some great cons arrived with your friend in the suit. 
They were talking about some delivery they took from a courier. I assume that was you? They said they'd be heading through Nipton to Novak to meet a contact there.
Drink it like booze! <laughs> Powder ganger? What? I mean, yeah, used to be, sure. But not no more. Powder gang is small time, man. I'm a winner! I won the motherfucking lottery! <laughs> Are you kidding me? Never felt better! Yeah! What lottery? The lottery! That's what lottery! Are you stupid? Only lottery that matters. Oh, oh my god, smell that air! <laughs> Bye.
Don't worry. I won't have you lashed to a cross like the rest of these degenerates. It's useful that you happen by. I want you to witness the fate of the town of Nipton, to memorize every detail. And then, when you move on, I want you to teach everyone you meet the lesson that Kaisar's Legion taught here, especially any NCR troops you run across. Where to begin? That they are weak and we are strong? This much was known already. But the depths of their moral sickness, their dissolution, Nipton serves as the perfect object lesson. Nipton was a wicked place, debased and corrupt. It served all comers, so long as they paid. Profligate troops, powder gangers, men of the Legion, such as myself. The people here didn't care. It was a town of whores. For a pittance, the town agreed to lead those it had sheltered into a trap. Only when I sprang it did they realize they were caught inside it too. Yes, and herded them to the center of town. I told them their sins, the foremost being disloyalty. I told them that when legionaries are disloyal, some are punished, the others made to watch. And I announced the lottery. Each clutched his ticket, hoping it would set him free. Each did nothing, even when loved ones were dragged away to be killed. It has a stark beauty, doesn't it? I'm glad you can appreciate it. Now go, and teach them what you learned here. There will be more lessons in the days ahead.
there. Need anything?
McCarran doesn't like it when civilians wander into military outposts, so if you're here on business, better make it quick. Radio signal out here can be pretty spotty because of all the hills. Sometimes our scheduled updates don't go through. When it happens enough times, they send someone over to check up on us. Lately, we've been getting extra medical supplies for some reason. I'm in no rush to give the supplies back, either. I shouldn't have said anything in the first place, and I'd rather not get you into the habit of crossing the NCR. Ranger Station Charlie. We're responsible for keeping the highway up through Novak civilized. All quiet at the moment. Ranger Beaumont is in charge here, but he's off leading a patrol. See you around. What can I do for you? That's not so bad. I'll have you looking as good as new. I mean, what are the chances of me botching another routine procedure in the same day? Sometimes ignoring something is the best medicine. Yeah, and I... Thanks. Later. Hey there. Hey there. Well, welcome to you. You look tired from the road. Why don't you relax a spell? Let this fine town take care of you. Well, he might have been wearing a fancy outfit, but he wasn't any kind of gentleman to me. Had his nose stuck so high in the air you couldn't see it above the clouds. City folk. They always think they deserve better than what they got. Those hoodlums he was with seemed to know Manny for some reason. 
He's our daytime sniper, up in the dinosaur's mouth. Watch out for strangers! Welcome to the Dino Bite gift shop. My name's Cliff. If you're here for the T-Rex figurines, you're just in time. There's still a few left. Well, there's T-Rex figurines, of course. That's our bread and butter. We also have an assortment of the Repcon factory souvenirs, rockets, things of that nature. Guns? I, uh, well, yeah, I guess I might have a few. Darn it, no one ever buys the T-Rexes. Sure thing. Have a look. Damn it. Don't sneak up on me like that. What do you want? I think you better leave. I don't have friends here. No. No, you're not, are you? Maybe you shouldn't go. Not just yet. I need someone I can trust. You're a stranger. That's a start. I want you to find something out for me. I don't know if there's anything to find, but I need someone to try. My wife was taken from our home by Legion slavers one night while I was on watch. They knew when to come and what route to take, and they only took Carla. Someone set it up. I don't know who. My wife's dead. I want the son of a bitch who sold her. Bring him out in front of the nest here while I'm on duty. I work nights. I'll give you my NCR beret to put on. It'll be our signal so I know you're standing with him. And I'll take care of the rest. I need to do this myself. Good. I'll make it worth your while. And one more thing. We shouldn't speak again. Not until it's over. No one in town knows that I know what happened to my wife. Best they never know. Or the Legion will be after me next. Yeah. How you Welcome back. Can I get you anything? Can't say we spoke much. Boone did most of the buying for him. She was in the store once, but she didn't stay long. Had a look on her face like she'd smelled something sour. But far as I can remember, the gift shop smelled fine. Well, fine as it always does. What's going on, man? I'm Manny. I'm on security detail here. You see a rifle barrel sticking out of the dinosaur's mouth, you got a 50-50 shot at me. Otherwise, it's Boone. Boone's a sniper, same as me. Used to spot for him when we were enlisted with the NCR. 
After we got out, I talked him into settling down here. So, here we are. I'd introduce you, but, uh, we're not so friendly right now. Me and his wife, we didn't see eye to eye on some things. We had some pretty big arguments. One day, she turns up missing, and he hasn't said a word to me since. Man, you name it. See, I grew up in North Vegas. Me and my cousins, we were some bad seeds. Got in with a gang, I loved it. Then something happened, and I couldn't handle it anymore. So, I enlisted, earned my future, brought down my best friend to share that future with me. And here was this woman, who was too good for it, trying to take him away. So yeah, I didn't see eye to eye with the bitch. Man, everybody. That girl didn't have one friend in this whole town. She didn't want any. She wanted to sit in a room all day and make herself miserable, and she went out of her way to be rude. She upset a lot of people. You wouldn't have liked her either. Were they tough? I was in the cons, man. It doesn't get any badder. Believe me, when I heard the news, my first thought was, I owe somebody big. I figured Boone would come around after a while. But he hasn't. I'm starting to think that if he doesn't find her, things will never go back to the way they were. Oh, it was great. I wouldn't trade it. Something about that lifestyle, the discipline, seeing new places, making people safe, what's not to like? Uh, well, I just felt like it was time, you know? Wanted to have a home. Plus, I was up at Camp Golf when Bitter Springs went down. I faked like I was sick to get out of going because I knew some of the people there. But when everybody came back, nobody would tell me what happened, and people would call us murderers sometimes when we showed up to secure towns. I still don't know exactly. Just that a lot of people died who didn't want to be a part of the fighting at all. I don't blame anybody for it. There's so much chaos when you're fighting. You're lucky not to shoot your own guys. But it did take something out of it for me. It just wasn't the same. So when it came time to re-enlist, I just took my papers and walked. Yeah, see ya. Howdy. I hope you're finding everything to your liking. Nothing that wouldn't be wrong with any man who loses a wife, I suppose. Poor dear. I know he thinks she was kidnapped, but I'm not so sure she didn't just run off on her own. You could tell she was thinking about it ever since they arrived. How should I put it? I guess you could say she was kind of like a cactus flower. Real pretty to look at, but there was just no getting close to her. She never did take to living here. She liked the big lights and fast living of New Vegas. I got the feeling she was trying to get Boone to leave with her, but I guess she got tired of waiting. Oh, what am I doing? I got to thinking about making a good impression and plain forgot to tell you my name. I'm Jeannie May. I take care of folks here at the motel, long as they aren't troublemakers. Watch out for strangers. I hope you're finding... We're in a little desert. Well, there's Dinky, the town mask, up the road a ways to... There's been some sinister... Other than that... Well, up north a ways, you'll see a big tower. That's Helios 1. Used to be a power plant in its day. And there's a town just east of here called Nelson. Used to be such a quaint little place until those slavers took it over. But we got our wonderful snipers keeping an eye in that direction, and so far, the slavers have left us alone.
Howdy. Well, butter my butt and call me a biscuit if it ain't my old friend from Good Springs. Don't rightly know. I just got the notion to make my way to New Vegas. Reckon I'll find out when I get there. Novak? Nice enough place, I suppose, but between you and me, when I roll into town, my skin start to itch. Watch yourself. Likewise, friend, likewise. Is there anything old Vic can do you for? That's a mighty fine offer, but I'm gonna need to conserve my strength if I'm gonna make it all the way to New Vegas. I'm sure you do just fine without old Vic slowing you down. No, don't believe I did. But you might ask around. The Novak folk usually see anyone traveling this way. Be seeing you. This is a restricted area. State your business. Your being here is a start, soldier. We aren't exactly overflowing with troopers here. But if you really want to help us, talk to the idiot with sunglasses in the back of the plant building. He's been trying to get this place running for months and hasn't made any forward progress. There should, but we're not getting much power out of it, so none of our enemies have big interest in it either. Not like Hoover Dam, anyway. We had a real fighting force here just long enough to take it from the Brotherhood of Steel. Then they got sent east to the dam like everybody else. Caesar's Legion sends skirmishers every so often, prodding for weaknesses mostly. The reality is, if they really wanted it, we'd all be dead. Damned if I know. Put up a hell of a fight, though. We had them outnumbered, I don't know, 20 to 1 maybe? They held out as long as they could, lost most of their force before they retreated. Gave us a little parting gift, too. They had some of the plant running, but they shut it all down. Enabled an old security system, too, to keep us away from the controls. <sighs> Jerk-offs. I ask myself the same question all the time. But energy is hard to come by around here. Gives you more control over this area than troops ever could. Hell, if we lose the dam to the Legion, this little plant may be our last stand. Later.
Hey there. I hope you're finding everything to your liking. I hope you're... Okay, if that's what you think. I hope you're finding everything to your liking. That's it then. How did you know? I guess I shouldn't be surprised. It'd be like them to keep paperwork. Here. This is all I can give. I think our dealings are done here. I don't know. I won't be staying, I know that. Don't see much point in anything right now, except hunting legionaries. Maybe I'll wander. Like you. No. People die out there. Often enough that no one worries about blame. They're too anxious to forget it happened in the first place, I guess. Besides, I was on break when it happened. You don't want to do that. Yeah, that might be true. 
That's reason enough for me to take you up on it, I suppose, but this isn't gonna end well. Fine. Let's get out of here. We've got a situation with some great cons right now. The Brass of McCarran has ordered me to lock down the ruins until it's been resolved. One of my patrols was on its way back from Novak when it came under fire from the great cons. They radioed for reinforcements, but instead of waiting for us, they chased the cons into the ruins where they were caught in a crossfire. No deaths, but not all the squad got out. The cons have Private Ackerman and Private Gilbert as hostages. Once the Great Khans have been killed or captured, you're welcome to retrieve any property they've taken from you. Acceptable casualties, I've been told. I don't like it, but the Brass has their reasons. Normally I'd turn you down since I have no idea who you are. But considering that the hostages are as good as dead when we attack... Alright. I'm going to give you a chance to talk to the Great Khans. Their leader is a man named Jessup. If we hear shooting, we'll be coming in, but it'll probably be too late for you. Good luck. What the hell? You're that courier Benny wasted back in Good Springs. You're supposed to be dead. Yeah, uh, about that. Don't have it. Benny stole it right before he stabbed us in the back. He's probably back at the strip by now laughing at me. I'm not afraid of a gunfight. I'd rather get back to Red Rock without a few extra holes in me if I can help it. What's to negotiate? The NCR backs off, we walk out of here, nobody gets hurt. I can't believe I'm doing this. But all right, the hostages can go. The NCR had better keep their end of the deal, though. Here, a souvenir for you. It's Benny's lighter. Shove it up his ass when you catch up with him. Yeah? On what? He's one of the chairmen, big shots that run the Topps Casino in New Vegas. A friend from the city contacted me with info on a big job. I should have known that the caps were too good to be true, but there was still no way I could pass up the chance. It's just a big fancy poker chip as far as I know. Don't know why anyone would make one out of platinum though. He's a snake, that's why. He owed us the rest of the pay for the job, so maybe he didn't want to pay up. Fine. Eh, go on.
I'm glad you're able to get my people freed, but there's a new problem. I just got orders to take out the Great Khans, hostages or not. My hands are tied. I can't go against orders, can I? You're right. The Great Khans are free to go. Fancy meeting you here, friend. Just rolling along on my spurs. Looks like I just might make it to New Vegas after all. Yep. Guess it's just down to you and Fancy Pants. I wouldn't worry about him. He looks all hat and no cattle, if you ask me. Fancy Pants? No, I ain't seen hiding a hair of him since the tussle in Good Springs. I'm sure he ran back to the soft living in New Vegas, though. Yep, this is getting a mighty embarrassing. People gonna start to talk. <laughs> Look me up when you get to New Vegas. I'll buy the first round.
No offense, but you look like you've traveled a long way down some bad roads. Where'd you come from? Huh. Well, in that case, I take it back. You look pretty good, given the circumstances. Well, welcome then. I'm Veronica. I live in a hole in the ground. Well, a bunker, if you want to get technical. I think it sounds more interesting my way. But I'm not there much anymore. I'm usually out here picking up food and supplies for my family. Whatever they need. Yeah, I'm not worried. They can handle themselves. But somebody has to get the groceries, know what I mean? And actually these days, I think they'd rather have me out here anyway. But that's a whole other story. So listen, can I ask you something on the level? I had a run-in with this group calling themselves the Brotherhood of Steel. Pretty strange bunch. Do you know anything about them? Do they? Oh, that's a relief. I wasn't so sure myself. Protecting people from technology seems like a big job for such a small group. Hey, so where are you headed anyway? Ooh, very exciting. Gonna strike it rich, huh? I'll be honest, you're the first person I've run across out here that looks like she can really handle herself. There are places I've never been to that'd be too dangerous for just me. What do you think? Maybe we could travel together, help each other out. Like I said, they can handle themselves. And I'm not the only one getting supplies for them. It's a big family. Oh, nowhere in particular, really. Just hoping to see more of the world looking for a fresh perspective. I want to see how different groups have adapted to survive in the Mojave. See if there's something I can learn from. Hmm. Good. That's the look I was going for. Trust me on this one, though. You'll be glad you brought me along. If I turn out to be a burden, we can part ways at any time. No hard feelings. Aw, you really know how to make a girl feel like a stray cat. But, okay, my offer stands if we run into each other again. What is it? He was a good spotter. Yeah, we were. No. Sure. No. All right. If that's what you think. All right. Guess I'll be around Novak for a while longer until I figure out what I want to do with myself. See you around. You've done a good turn for the NCR, and now we'd like to do one for you. There's an NCR emergency two-way radio. You call and we'll come running. You're not alone out here. The NCR has your back. Stay safe and good hunting. Couldn't get enough of talking to me the first time, huh? Good, I'd hoped you'd come around, shall we? Now you're talking. One thing you should know first though, I ask you about the Brotherhood because I'm one of them. I know, I know, but I had to know how you react when I told you. We have made a lot of enemies. You still okay bringing me along? I'm great at punching people. I'm not gonna lie. It's a gift. Well, thanks for taking a chance on a naive young girl from California with stars in her eyes and a pneumatic gauntlet on her hand. Let's hit the road, huh? You're making me carry the heavy stuff, aren't you?
What's up? Step into my office. I like long walks in the desert and candlelit metal workshops. I would say he was my tutor, but that doesn't cover it. After my parents passed, he looked after me. The whole brotherhood brought me up, really, but he made sure of it. I never had a grandfather, not that I knew, anyway. But Elijah was in some ways what I'd imagined a grandfather to be. It was by his request, actually. He cleared it with the other elders, somehow. They sent him to look into the dam. There was a time when I'd have begged to follow, watch him at work. He did. For years, he fought with the council, taught me to question our direction. Meanwhile, he'd become more out of touch than all of them. On our way east, he demanded we stop at Helios 1 to examine it. While we were there, we received word that the NCR had taken the dam. He was furious, called it children playing with a bomb, but he was mad because we'd lost his power. What we'd use it for, he didn't even care. They're cautious. When they discover something, they respect it, learn its limits, consider how to preserve it. Used to drive Father Elijah crazy. He liked to learn limits too, but only so he could push them. That's not to excuse the other elders though. They all covet technology for its own sake. Some are just more fanatical than others. Yeah, I did. I couldn't help him. He just didn't listen. And the idea that people talk back to him. <sighs> if he could have made the Brotherhood act like machines, ordering them around with the push of a button, he would have. Elijah could look at an old device and immediately understand what made it work. And he could see its potential, where it fit with other technology. It's not something he could teach, but he tried with me. Some of it stuck. But that's what he taught me. You ask what I learned from him. I learned what I don't want to become. In the end, there was just him and his vision. Nothing and no one else. Yeah. I miss him. I don't know. Last time anyone saw him was in the battle at Helios 1. I wasn't there. He gave orders to hold the plant until it could be reactivated. But he ran out of time. The NCR overran it. Everyone thought he was dead. But I got a note from him at a comm station. That's how he liked to talk, even to me. He wasn't good at face-to-face. -face. It was... strange. Even for Father Elijah. He's always been unstable, but this was something else. I don't want to say delusional, but I don't know what else to call it. The only thing familiar about it was the signature. He said the Brotherhood was doomed, but that he'd return, save us. But the way he said it, I don't know. Said he'd return with one of the greatest treasures of the old world, make the Mojave like it was meant to be. Wipe the slate clean. Hey, I didn't know the Brotherhood had any people out here. Stay alert. Morning.
I didn't know the Brotherhood had any people out here. Wish the followers would get me some better armor. Medicine's running low again.
sir or madam. Do you wish to purchase something? All Gunrunner merchandise is constructed on site. This is the new Vegas branch of the Gunrunners, supplying the wasteland with only the finest armaments since 2155. I am ready to process our transaction. This kiosk was specially constructed around me to deter theft and assault. Come back and see us again soon. Hey, buddy, spare a cap? I can make it worth your while. The first thing you should know is that Freeside is run by a pack of yahoos that call themselves the Kings. Their leader, who oddly enough calls himself the King, currently has his hands full trying to prevent an all-out riot in Freeside. That's two tips, but what the hell? You're a new customer, so the extra one's on me. Wanna hear another? There was a rumor a while back that the White Glove Society was really an all-ghoul gang, which is why they wear those weird masks of theirs. What do you think? Would I look good in a mask? Maybe I'd make more caps. I got more where that came from. Want another? Traders have been griping for a while now about I-15 being too dangerous to travel. I'd steer clear of it unless you're armed to the teeth. I got more Things have generally been bad here for the squatters, the people who came here hoping for a better life and just got stuck. But lately, the mood has changed. The squatters seem to be a bit more optimistic. I wonder what happened. The chairman run a casino on the strip called The Tops. It's a pretty classy place, by all reports. I haven't been there myself, but I hear security there is kinda tight. I got more where that came from. Want another? The Omertas, one of Mr. House's three families, run a casino called Gamora on the Strip. If you thought the Wrangler was something, you owe it to yourself to go there. A traveler that passed through here not long ago told everyone he met that there's some kind of plant paradise to the west, where food is abundant. All the people foolish enough to listen to him and head out that way 
never came back. What do you say? Want another tip? People in Freeside generally fall into one of two categories. Those who've been here all their lives call themselves locals. When people from the NCR and other places started pouring in, the locals began referring to them as squatters, and the name stuck. The locals blame the squatters for the scarcity of resources in Freeside, and the squatters blame any act of violence against them on the locals. They're both right to some extent, and violent outbreaks between the two are all too common these days. I... I understand. Well, have a good day. Looking for a fix, man? I got what you need. Have a look, baby. Come on back if you have any interesting news. Good day. If it can be bought, it can be found at Mick and Ralph's. It can be bought, it can be found at Mick and Ralph's. Lasers, plasma, pistols, grenades. We've got it all at the Silver Rush. You look new to Freeside, so here's a little advice, friend. Don't go past the Southgate greeter without talking to it first. Those bots are programmed to vaporize anyone who enters the fenced-in area without authorization from the greeter. The name's Old Ben. I've been living in Freeside since the day I was born. I've done a bit of everything around here. Courier, butcher, crier, escort, gun for hire. Some of which I'm not proud of, but I do my best to help around town when needed. After a while, I made enough money to get a passport into Vegas. Back then, you could get approved for entry for a fraction of what it costs now. Well, I got a job working as a crier outside of the Tops, advertising for the local talent performing at the casino. That didn't last long. Well, being a suave young guy, I chatted up the ladies from time to time, and one of the manager's girls started to take a liking to me. I never touched the woman, but the jealous prick decided it was my time to go. He framed me by saying I'd stolen from the casino. Sure enough, a few grand was missing from the casino vault. I have to assume the bastard stole the funds and figured I was a convenient fall guy. Yeah, but what can you do? I was stripped of my casino apartment and all of my belongings, and booted back into Freeside. From there, I didn't have a lot of career options, as my rep was destroyed. So the escort job sort of fell into my lap. 
No pun intended. Well, I suppose you could look at it that way, but I was packing a whole different kind of heat. No, escort just sounds better than man whore. Yep, I was damn good at my job too, but after a while I just felt like a piece of meat and had to quit. All right, later. Submit to a credit check, or present your passport before proceeding to the gate. Trespassers will be shot. Admission to the strip requires an official passport, or proof that you are carrying the required minimum balance. These policies prevent less reputable persons from entering, and ensure a good time will be had by all who enter the strip. Please return when you have sufficient cash or passport. You have entered a restricted area. Watch out! Submit to a credit check. Please submit to a... Exterminate.
Submit to a credit check. I'm s If you are unable to meet the minimum balance requirement, an official passport is an acceptable alternative. If it's bad news, you can take it up with the Colonel. If it's good news, it better involve some dead fiends. Damn right I am, and I'm paying bounties. I've got three fiends I want dead, and I don't give a goddamn how it gets done. That sound like something that interests you? First one calls herself Violet. God knows why. The name is the prettiest thing about her. Spends most of her time with a pack of vicious dogs. Then there's Driver Nafai. He's fast, and he's brutal. Killed about a dozen of my men with a goddamn driver iron. Hence his name. And finally, Cook Cook. Rapist, pyromaniac, and damn good chef if you believe the fiends we've captured. Probably the craziest of the lot. I'm not gonna feed you any bullshit. These aren't your common Vegas trash. They've all killed good NCR men, and plenty of mercs too. You go after them, any of them, you're in for a hell of a fight. So, which one is it gonna be? One thing I should tell you about Cook Cook. Piece of shit is pure animal. He raped one of my snipers, and that makes this personal. Also, he's got a flamethrower, and he's damn good with it. From what I hear, he either rapes or burns every living thing he gets his hands on. Only one man's gotten close to killing him, and that's Little Buster. So he says, anyway. Maybe it's bullshit, but I'd still ask him about it. Bounty Hunter talks big, but he's still alive, so he can't be completely full of shit. I think he's out in the yard waiting to claim a couple bounties. One more thing. If you want the full reward, you need to bring me a recognizable head. My superiors need proof they're gone. That means no headshots, no decapitations till after they're dead, and no damage to the face. If you want to be safe, aim for the chest. You bring me a head that looks like a rotten tomato, people will be doubting, and I won't be authorized to pay the entire bounty. Good luck to you, and don't get careless. Right. Howdy. Name's Sterling, First Recon. Can't say I've seen you before. I'd remember if I had. Got a good memory for faces. Landmarks and such, too. Comes with practice, that's all. And a lot of scouting from place to place. I called her the Long Caribbean. Didn't always have the scope. I added that myself. Been shooting with her so long, couldn't bring myself to toss her away. Would have felt guilty to part with the old girl. The other snipers used bolt action, but Gore Betts reckoned it didn't matter none if I was different, so long as I could hit my targets. Used to be a ranger, one of the first they sent out east back before we took the dam. Observation and reconnaissance. We took the lay of the land, checked out the locals, and kept ourselves inconspicuous. A couple friends of mine were the first to scout the dam. That was back in 73, if I recall. A lot of those rangers are dead now. Vegas always chewed men up. It's just a little more literal nowadays. 
Well, that wasn't really a matter of choice. Got myself caught by legionaries up near Malpay. They had themselves some fun with me. Mangled my hands and feet pretty good. Wasn't much good with the pistol after that. Wasn't gonna be trekking across the waste on any more long scouts either. Caesar's boys figured I wasn't going anywhere after what they'd done to me. So they didn't bother tying me up. I crawled out of there on my elbows and knees. Must have looked a sight. Then I rolled down an embankment into the Colorado. Guess I had a mind to drown rather than give Caesar's boys the satisfaction of killing me. But a couple of rangers happened to be watching from across the river. They jumped on in and pulled me out of there. Lucky break, they said. Going on six months now, but I reckon we'll be moving out soon enough. Can't talk about the details. Till then, we'll man the towers and keep an eye on the fiends. We've had more than our share of trouble from their direction. Whole thing smells of Caesar to me. Of course, that's just guesswork. But I'd still bet a few caps he's stirring up the locals against us. It can be bought. It can be found at Mick and Ralph's. What do we have here? Another petitioner for the king? Anything's possible, I suppose. How much is it worth to you to meet the big man? You know what? I like you. Half the people around here, they forget who runs this place. Head on through. The king's the bored-looking guy by the stage. Can't fucking miss him. Look, Rexy, someone new's come to see us. Poor boy. He hasn't been feeling well lately. I'm the king. What can I do for you? Maybe so. Maybe so. You look like you might be able to handle yourself. Tell you what, you do me a favor, and I'll have some more work for you when it's done. Sound good? In that case... Some of the things I need handled will be right up your alley. I'll start you off with something easy. Did you notice the bodyguards for hire near the gates when you entered Freeside? It's good money if you can stay alive long enough. Freeside's not as safe as it used to be, so the money is well earned. Usually well earned, that is. Recently, my man tell me that one of those bodyguards, a fellow named Oris, is making a little too much money. He's making a killing in repeat business. Once someone hires him, they never want anyone else. I want you to find out why. Specifically, I want you to hire him. Play the part of an innocent tourist and follow his lead. If nothing happens, so be it. But I'm guessing things won't go so smoothly. Call it a hunch. So, what do you say? Okay then. Once you part ways, return here. I'll look forward to hearing your report. Oh, and take this to cover the hiring cost. You got something you want to say?
We've got stuff we're not even allowed to sell, people. Hey. Only at Mick and Ralph's. If you need to cross Freeside, no one will keep you safer than I will. Just look around. People here are as like to stab you as say hello. That is, if I weren't at your side. 200 caps gets you my watchful eye for a trip to the South Gate. Sorry, but all the people with real money are heading for the Strip, so that's the way I go. You wanna go somewhere else? Hire one of these losers. Done and done. I want to mention a few things up front. In order to ensure your safety, I need you to follow my instructions to the letter. We'll be heading down the main street here the whole way down. No detours. You go off sightseeing, and I go off to find another customer. I'll keep a brisk pace, so try not to fall behind. Now let's head out. Here is the old Mormon fort. You get roughed up, the followers there will patch you right up. Not that I ever need their services. Up ahead on the next block is where the kings hang out. Don't let them scare you. Come to Mick and Ralph for you all your shopping one, needs. Down to the right here is the fun part of town. You haven't seen Freeside till you've been to the Wrangler. Hey, slow down. I don't like the look of some of those men ahead. Let's take a different way around. Nothing to worry about. If you had hired one of those other hacks, you'd be up to your ass in lowlife right about now. Call it a hunch. You do this job for long enough, and you learn to trust your instincts. You're imagining things. It's just the rush of adrenaline caused by your near brush with death. Luckily for you, I was here, so there's no reason to get out of sorts. My thoughts exactly. Time is money, after all. Well, here we are. No worse for wear, are you? I trust that if you need to cross Freeside again, you'll know who to hire. Okay, that's it. Oris isn't paying us enough to put up with this shit. Over Let's here. just kill this one and be done.
What's up? May I help you? What do you have for me? Ah, so it went down like that, huh? I guess it can't be helped now. Well, you're not subtle, but you get the job done. That's good enough for me. Maybe you can help me with something more important. A lot of folks around these parts who've been here a while resent the sheer number of people that have come into the area since the Strip was built. In turn, the newcomers, most of whom come from the NCR, have gotten ornery from being resented. Sometimes things get violent. This is one of those occasions. Recently, a few friends of mine were attacked, and I want you to find out who did it. Words come that they just woke up over at the old Mormon fort just north of here. Head on over, see if they remember anything. Good. I like that enthusiasm. Return when you have some information we can use. Hi. Come to Nick and Ralph's for all your shopping needs. I've been around a while, currently working for the followers as a gun for hire, but it's getting rather dull. Aside from protecting them from the occasional thug looking to intercept supply shipments, there isn't much to do around here. The one researcher I liked who I could chat up about liquor got transferred, and the rest of the docks are pretty uptight about my kind of fun. I've been around long enough to observe the patterns of human behavior. Physical and mental anguish are especially exciting to explore. Hey, who doesn't enjoy a little pinch and squeal every once in a while? I joined up looking for a decent paying job. Granted, the pay's all right, but they won't let me kick back and slog a brew at the end of the day. They're worried the filthy drunkies and detox seeing me drink will cause an immediate relapse. I say their rehab effort here is just a revolving door. What do you have in mind? Time you enjoy wasting isn't wasted time. Bye. I ain't got any reason to talk to you. What is it? Can't you see I want to be left alone with my friend here? Oh, that's different then. How can I help? I'll do anything to get the bastards that did this. 
Well, it happened at night, around 11. We'd recently made some caps off a bit of scrap we found and wanted to invest it wisely. As we were leaving the Wrangler, we must have taken a wrong turn and ended up in the squatter side of town. From out of nowhere, these big guys show up and start barking questions at us, wanting to know if we were locals. The kid there is about as proud as a local around here gets and started yelling back at him. Then all hell broke loose. Kid got the worst of it, sad to say. They were big guys, young too, no old geezers like me. Hell, none of them looked even half my age. I was mostly face down in the dirt, begging for my life when it happened, so I only got a quick look at them. I hope you find the bastards that did this. If you want, try asking my friend Wayne over there about them. He saw more than I did. Scram. Wayne, if... That true? Did the king really send you? I don't really know what else I can add. They were a bunch of guys, better dressed than most freesiders, I guess. That help? What? No! I thought you were supposed to be here to help, and here you are making accusations. Hey, wait. I just remembered something. I might have heard one of the guys that attacked us call another by name. We had just about had it when one of them said, Hey, Lou, we gotta go. At least I think he said Lou. It might have been something else. Now that I think of it, he said Lou something. Something with a T. Tenant. That's what he called him. Lou Tenant. He probably said Lieutenant Wayne. The boy means well, but he's dumb as a mutant sometimes. Evening. We've got stuff we're not even allowed to sell, people. Oh. Have you found anything out, or were you just here to chat? Bunch of soldier boys, huh? They usually don't come around these parts since their big base is on the other side of the strip. If they're coming over here now, it's gotta be for a reason. I didn't want to believe the rumors that they're looking to take over Vegas, but now, if something big is going down, I'm sure rumors of it will have spread. Ask around, particularly in the squatter areas where the NCR folk hang. You might also mosey on over to the Mormon fort and chat Julie Farkas up. The followers tend to be in the know about these things. Just don't ask her what to do about it. She'll probably ask you to hug someone or something. Personal space meaning anything to you, lady? It can be bought. It can be found at Mick and Ralph's. Are you here to drop off medical supplies? Leave them with the rest in the middle of the courtyard. More than rough. It's a damn mess. Freeside townies are constantly picking fights with NCR civilians. Thugs and thieves are always looking for a victim, and the local families are just sitting back making caps on the mess. Freeside is in dire need, but no one has been man enough to step up. The followers can only do so much to stem the tide. There is always something needing done. A few souls here in Freeside could be great assets to the community if they'd kick their addictions. We need a regular supply of medicine organized, but the Crimson Caravan wants too many caps for what we need. Lastly, tensions between the townies and NCR tourists have been going downhill fast lately. A lot of innocent people will get hurt if things blow up. Only a little. A friend of mine, Major Elizabeth Kieran, has been handing out supplies to the poor a little west of here. What about it? I know something's got them riled up, but I've been too busy with other matters to really look into it. 
If you're looking into the matter, talk to Elizabeth. She's in charge of the operations here in Freeside, though she won't open up to you right away. If Elizabeth holds out on you, tell her that I sent you. She should be a little more forthcoming if you mention my name. Was there anything else you wanted to talk about? Can't help but be impressed with what they're doing here. like a person in need of a good meal. You wouldn't happen to be an NCR citizen, would you? Now, it's not that I don't believe you, but I'm gonna have to give you a little quiz to verify your citizenship status. That okay with you? That's a good attitude. I'm sure you'll do fine. These are just a few questions that just about anyone in the NCR would know. Alright, here we go. First question. Who was the most popular president in NCR history? Peterson, Tibbet, Kimball, or Tandy? Uh-huh. Okay, second question. What was the original name of the NCR capital? Aradesh, Shady Sands, The Boneyard, or Vault 13? Right. Fine, then. Last question. What animal is on the NCR's flag? A two-headed bear, an eagle, a two-headed snake, or a two-tailed lion? Good. You passed with flying colors. I told you it'd be fine. I expect you're wanting to know about that meal then, huh? We're located up by the old train station in the northwest part of town. Just tell the guards hope and they'll let you through. Best of luck to you. We're not even allowed to sell, people. Only at Mick and Ralph's.
Hold up. What's the password? If you're here to see the Major, then I suppose it's all right. Head on through. Here you go. I hope this helps. Welcome. There's food and water here for any citizen of the NCR. Please, have some. No, I'm afraid we don't. Don't you have a friend you wanted to bring in? You were right. But here, take another helping for your friend. It'll be our secret. Yes? Was there something else you needed? Yes. I'm a major in the Supply Corps, which is where this food and water comes from. That's not really a pleasant topic of conversation. Let's just say we have our reasons. You know Julie? Not everyone in the NCR sees eye to eye with the followers, but they're okay in my book, mostly because of her. If you really want to know, we sent an envoy to the King, offering to coordinate the relief effort. In a manner of speaking, our envoy was brutally beaten and only barely survived. My superiors ordered the relief mission scrapped. I managed to get clearance to carry out the mission anyway, but with greatly reduced support. Now there's not enough supplies to go around, even if I wanted to serve the rest of Freeside, which I don't. That's all in the past now. I should get back to work. Say hi to Julie for me. Hello. Lasers, plasma, pistols, grenades. We've got it all. Well, hey there. I heard that NCR soldier lady told you some wild story about them sending a messenger to us to work out some deal. That's bullshit, and it's nothing to bother the king with. More like they sent someone to spy on us, and he wasn't tough enough to last in Freeside. So do everyone a favor and keep your mouth shut about it, okay? You're a bastard after my own heart. Here, yeah, this should do it. That's all you get. Keep your mouth shut. Now if you'll pardon me, I got some important business to take care of. Personal space meaning anything to you, lady? You find out something about them soldier boys yet? Handing out supplies? Like food and stuff? That ain't nothing to get ruffled over. You find anything else? Ah, that would explain the goons. They're here to keep people like my friends away from the food. That ain't something I support. No, sir. Wait a minute, wait a minute. They said what? Huh, that would explain why they're all riled at us. Seems like we have a big misunderstand. What the hell? King, we've got problems. Lay it on me. What's going on? There's a shootout going down near the train station. It's Pacer and some strangers. Might be NCR. What is that fool doing? I need you to head out there and try to defuse the situation. Tell them I'm willing to cooperate. May I help you?
You want someone dead? Really dead? Stop by the Silver Rush and we'll give you the meat. Keep your hands where we can see them. Draw a weapon and we will fire. This isn't really a good time. What did you want? Like he helped the envoy we sent? <laughs> no thanks. Then he should watch his back. We know for a fact that the envoy made it to their headquarters. Still, if the King's willing to deal with us, perhaps we can work something out. I'll tell my men to stand down. The King just sent a messenger over, saying these guys are off limits. He's probably already heard about what you did here. Looks like you get to be a hero. Enjoy it while it lasts. Baby, I know a quiet place we can be alone. Or a loud place, if you're one of those. Wanna come back to my place? I've got my own mattress and everything. Hey. What's the rush, baby? Stay a while. Personal space meaning anything to you, guy? You're not a king. Does the king know you're up here? I heard all about what happened. Maybe it's time for a little more talking and a little less fighting. You've helped us plenty, so I'll tell you what. Just this once. Name whatever you want, and if I can make it happen, it's done. Don't rush it, though. Toss it around in your head a little. 
You only get one favor from the king. Things have been a lot better since you helped with those soldier boys. Thanks again. So, what can I do for you? Ask away. Sure can. I have a friend who has just what you're looking for. Has a shop over yonder by the East Gate, named Mick and Ralph's. Just tell Ralph that I sent you, and he'll get you squared away.
There's a lot more troops here than we thought. No wonder we couldn't hold Helios 1. You got something to say, or do you always look like that? Submit to a credit check, or present your passport before proceeding to the gate. Trespassers will be shot. Please be- Hi. Hello again. What are you Stop by Mick and Ross for all your shopping needs, man. Mick and Ross is located just before the East Gate. Hello. If you're looking for guns, talk to Mick. Otherwise, I've got a nice selection of general supplies. One of his boys stopped in and said you had won the king's favor. You've done right by this town and deserve a pass. Here you go. Take a gander. Come back anytime. Submit to a credit check. Thank you, madam. You may proceed.
That's it. Keep moving. Howdy, partner. You've come for a piece, haven't you? Welcome to New Vegas. Consider me your personal welcome, wife. Now hear this. The head honcho of New Vegas, Mr. House, is itching to make your acquaintance. Just head for the Lucky 38. It's the big old tower shaped like a roulette spinner. Well now, it was Mr. House that made Securitrons like me. Seems the least I can do is pass on his message. Don't dog, he'll be waiting. Those last five shots were a bad idea. I'm going to have words with your commanding officer after this. Why do they call it a monorail? It's a train. A train. I have half a mind to throw you Wait, all in the already? cell and let you sweat it off. Hey there, friend. A bit of advice. You look like you could use some protection. Lucky for you, I got what you need. My stock and trade? All kinds of easy-to-hide weapons for slipping into and out of casinos. They won't give you a second glance. Things guards can't spot when they're patting you down or checking for iron at your hip. Take a look at these beauties. show you the time of your life. Come on, come on. Look alive, guys. You're on insta- <laughs> Yard time. I swear the monorail was just bad. Well, howdy, partner. Good to see you again. Boss is waiting for you upstairs, so get a move on. I see you brought a friend. Sorry, partner, but they're going to have to stay outside. Come back soon now. Where to, partner? Penthouse floor. Well, hello, sugar. Mr. House is waiting for you in his office. I'm Jane, one of Mr. House's girls. We keep him entertained. We don't get many guests lately. Perhaps we can entertain you as well. Why, Sugar, he's the maximum utmost. If it weren't for Mr. House, we wouldn't have this fabulous wonderland of New Vegas, would we? Sugar, I may be a robot on the outside, but on the inside, my neurocomputational matrix is an exact copy of Mr. House's favorite girl. Mr. House has a lot of needs, Sugar. I take care of all of them, and a lady doesn't kiss and tell. Well, of course I am, silly. Mr. House is just the smartest, most wonderful man there ever was. Why, did you know he single-handedly reclaimed New Vegas from all those nasty tribes that used to live here? Well, he single-handedly sent in his Securitrons to do it, but that counts in my book. 
Anything you like, sugar. This is the Lucky 38 Resort and Casino, or it used to be. Mr. House has kept the place locked up tight for ages now. Nobody comes in or out. Why, I'm a Robco PDQ 88B Mark I Securitron, you silly goose. We're the finest in personal civil robotic security on the market. Not many people know this, but Mr. House is one of the world's biggest collectors of antique snow globes. If you happen to find any out in the wasteland, you can bring them to me, and I'll add them to his collection. You'll get a reward, of course. In fact, one of Mr. House's favorites went missing when we moved the collection. If you have a look around the Lucky 38, you might even find it. Goodbye. This meeting has been a long time coming, hasn't it? You've come a long ways, literally and, I suspect, figuratively as well. I have to ask, now that you've reached your destination, what do you make of what you see? A crude question, crudely asked. I'll be happy to satisfy your rambunctious curiosity at a more appropriate moment. But now, I'll repeat my question. What do you make of what you've seen? Of course you haven't. Vegas always was one of a kind. What you see down on the Strip is just a fraction of the city's former glory, and yet, more than an echo, I preserved its spirit. Or perhaps you were referring to the Lucky 38? The years haven't been kind to her, but still she manages to impress. Oh, don't be coy. You've been playing a high-stakes game ever since Victor dug you out of the ground. Don't be afraid to admit it. The business is this. One of my employees has stolen an item of extraordinary value from me, and I want it recovered. Simple enough. What did you wish to know? My only concern is the recovery of the platinum chip. What happens to Benny, I leave to your discretion. When you bring the chip to me, I will pay you four times the delivery bonus stipulated in your contract. How's that? Well enough. Return to me when you have the platinum chip in your possession. Any final matters for us to discuss? What else did you want to know? It won't be easy. Benny is always surrounded by at least four bodyguards except when he's in his private suite on the 13th floor of the Tops. Sneaking into Benny's suite on the 13th floor would be very difficult, but not impossible. There might be guards. Certainly there'd be a sturdy lock on his front door. If you were to approach Benny in public, you might be able to leverage his fear of exposure to make him agree to meet with you in private. It's more complicated than that. The chairmen share what you might call a tribal affinity. Look for a man named Swank, Benny's second in command. He's always been a reliable, if unimaginative, employee. Do your best to convince him that you're working under my auspices. If you have evidence of Benny's crimes, show it to him. By contract, Securitrons are to enter the casinos only when invited by the three families, or if other extraordinary circumstances arise. The moment I send one into the tops, Benny will know I'm on to him. What else?
Benny has led the chairman ever since I recruited his tribe seven years ago. Until his recent misbehavior, I planned to make him my protege. Maybe if I'd begun grooming him sooner, none of this would have happened. To achieve my aims, I require a capable human agent to perform certain... tasks. I knew Benny was ambitious, even ruthless, but I believed he would do the job so long as he was incentivized appropriately. Obviously, I miscalculated his drive for supremacy, but in any case, you've come along. A more than suitable replacement. I have to think that he found out about the platinum chip and mistakenly convinced himself that he could use it to his own ends. One of the problems of a tribal workforce, I'm afraid. No intuitive understanding of how complex technologies can be. Why didn't Victor intervene sooner, you mean? Good Springs is a bit too far away for me to reliably control a Securitron agent by remote. I can send and receive packets of data at best. Victor's combat algorithms determine the proper course of action. Benny and his thugs were more than a match for a lone Securitron. When he alerted me, I instructed him to approach the site after Benny and the others had departed. What? It's a very special item. There's nothing else like it in the entire world. It was lost a long time and difficult to find. That's all you need to know about it for this stage of our enterprise. Fulfill your contract, deliver the chip, and good things will come your way. You might keep an eye out for any computers that Benny's been using. Maybe even a computer lab of some sort. You realize you were just one of many couriers, the rest of them dummies, so to speak. Add to that many thousands of caps worth of mercenary protection to screen your avenue of approach. Had I used an armed caravan to transport the chip, I might as well have been announcing to the world, this is important, attack this. I didn't want to attract the attention of groups like the Great Khans or the Brotherhood of Steel. Alas, the real threat was closer to home. That's simply not true. I am the only person to hold any rights pertaining to the chip. I designed it, and I paid for it, dearly. To develop that chip, I spent a sum of US dollars. Not the bottle caps that pass as currency these days, but a sum beyond counting. For decades, I paid salvagers to comb the ruins for it. And when it was finally discovered, tens of thousands of caps spent to have it brought here. We know how that turned out. Complete your contract, and it will be the last time I pay for the chip. Save your questions for then. Frontal assaults on casinos? Not good for business. In any case, Benny would see it coming, and all he'd have to do is hold the chip up and point a pistol at it. Our foremost advantage is that Benny doesn't know that I know he has the chip. Let's not squander it. I am Robert Edwin House, President, CEO, and sole proprietor of the New Vegas Strip. I oversaw the city's renovations starting from 2274 onward. The three families are my employees. Before the Great War of 2077, I was the founder, president, and CEO of Robco Industries, a vast computer and robotics corporation. Don't let the video screens and computer terminals fool you. I'm flesh and blood, not silicon. Let's just say it was very... costly. But I was willing to make the sacrifices longevity entailed, financial and otherwise. We can discuss this in greater detail at another time. Suffice it to say that when my Securitrons detected NCR scouts at Hoover Dam, I took action. 
I recruited a tribal force to supplement my Securitrons and renovated the Strip just in time to welcome the NCR as it marched into the region. Instead of war, a treaty was negotiated and the money started to pour in. It's understandable that you'd be curious about this topic, but we'll hold off until the Platinum Chip has been recovered. What else did you want to know? Well enough. Be on your way. Congratulations, partner. The boss has instructed me to comp you to the High Roller Suite. You can bring your friends, too. Be like a little clubhouse for the gang you put together. Just bear in mind, you're the only one gets to see the boss. Any friends you got, they can wait in the suite. Enjoy the digs, partner. They're plenty fancy. I roll her sweet. Where to, partner? Casino floor. Hey, you there. I have a message for you. It's from Ambassador Crocker. Very important. Here you go. Aw, just when the standing around was getting exciting. <laughs> I gotta see that. Wow, that's crazy. I th <laughs> thought nobody has ever been inside that place. Hey, that one must be important. <laughs> It's hard to sleep in this place, I tell you. Last night, some girl... Sorry, I'm here to have a good time, not talk to random people. Hey, hey, baby doll. Welcome to the Tops Hotel and Casino. I'm gonna have to ask you to hand over any weapons you might be carrying. Smooth and easy, just the way I like it. Don't worry, they'll be as safe as kittens till you're ready to leave. Oh, and a friendly word of advice. If you happen to stumble across any weapons during your stay here, well, just don't wear them openly. You dig? Now that we got that little business out of the way, what can I do to make your tops experience the tops? Everything your little heart desires, that's what. You like gambling? Boom! Either one of the main hallways has cards, slots, you name it. Hungry? Thirsty? The restaurant just off the left-hand hallway has the best food and booze in Vegas. Or maybe you'd rather take in a show. 
The Ace's Theater upstairs always has hot acts raring to go. Check it out. Have a good time, baby. Enjoying your stay? Relax, baby. The safe is houses. We'll keep them locked up in the bank upstairs right next to the money. It's serious protection. Hello. What in the goddamn? Let's keep this in the groove, hey? Smooth moves, smooth. Hello. That broad everyone saw go in the lucky 38, that was you? Oh, shit. You making a pass at me, sister? Because I'm out of your league. Did those bullets scramble your egg? Or have you always been a naughty broad? You're one sick pussycat, baby. There's Quinns, and then there's... I don't even know what to call you. I hear dig from you, babe, and all I can think of is a shovel. How can this be? This ain't forgiveness. It's something... wrong. All right, honey baby, this is all kinds of wrong, but to my suite it is. Thirteenth floor, don't keep me waiting. No sudden moves around the boss, got it? I got my eye on you. So no funny business. Hey, there's the high roller. Hey. 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 Benny's going to show you the tops. I hope you're built sturdy, you crazy broad. More than you ever dreamed, baby. You're platinum, pussycat. You know how to swing. Nice Charlies, too. Give him a shake for the Ben man, will you? Hello. Oh, that was a nice bit of hey hey, girly. You're a real ring a ding broad. Hold me, will you? I swear you wore me out. Huh?
Hey! Hi there! Good to meet you! What can I do for you today? Good question! My function is to monitor Mr. House's data network and decode his encrypted transmissions. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm a PDQ-88B Securitron, but you can call me Yes Man. It's what Benny always called me, probably because I'm programmed to be so helpful. Sure, Benny had me look at it a bunch of times. It's a data storage device, kind of like a holotape, but a lot more advanced. As for what's on it, well, some of Mr. House's data transmissions made it sound like the chip could upgrade his defenses somehow. That's just a guess, though. The chip's a proprietary format. You need special hardware to read the data on it. There are two locations with non-standard hardware on the network, the Lucky 38 and an underground facility at Fortification Hill. I'd look there! Oh, he had some help. A lady friend of his. She said something about living in a fort over in Freeside. But that's all I remember. This is Benny's workshop. When the tops got renovated, he had this half of the floor blocked off for his own use. I guess you could say it's my entire world. I don't think I've ever left this room. But that's okay. I'm not complaining. Oh, he wanted to kill Mr. House and use the platinum chip to copy my neural computational matrix onto the Lucky 38's mainframe. That would give me control over all of Mr. House's defenses, most prominently his Securitrons. And then I guess I just do as I'm told. Sure, if the chip could be used to reset administrator privileges, it'll be super easy. Then I'd have to help you. I mean, it seems pretty obvious Benny wouldn't have wanted me to, but hey, not my fault I can't say no. Again, goal number one is to eliminate Mr. House and install my neurocomputational matrix on the Lucky 38's mainframe. Given how you're a new arrival, I also recommend that you get to know some of the region's tribes, so you can decide how you feel about them. By the time you finished up all of that, the Legion should be close to attacking Hoover Dam, and we'll execute the last phase of the plan. Right! It's one of two locations on Mr. House's network with non-standard hardware. My guess is it has a reader that can decode the chip, and who knows what else, maybe a giant robot or something. Neat. Let me know what you find out. Oh no, I didn't mean that. Who needs their support? The Securitrons will be all the support you need. What I meant is, you should get to know these tribes and decide which ones you like and which you don't. You know, shape the future of Vegas. Choose your neighbors. If you like a tribe, leave it alone. Or, if a tribe is nasty or going to be a problem, go ahead and exterminate it. It's whatever you want to do. There's a bunch. Some of them you've already met, like the chairman, for instance. I think you should visit the other families on this strip, the Omertas and the White Glove Society, so you know what makes them tick. And there are some important groups farther from the strip, too, like the Boomers, the Great Khans, and the Brotherhood of Steel. Of course, ask away. Some of Mr. House's dad has said that he'd lost a bunch of Securitron scouts near Hidden Valley. Telemetry showed that they'd been attacked with energy weapons. House was pretty sure it was the Brotherhood. There must be a bunch of them holed up there. Not a good place for a robot to visit. They go around in big suits of power armor and they have lots of energy weapons. But there's a downside. They just have a thing about technology. They think it should all be theirs. If someone else has it, they get mad. All I'm saying is, not much of a chance they'll accept a Vegas that polices itself with robots. No rush, take your time. Anything else? They must be a really nasty people. 
I haven't heard a single good thing about them. They fire artillery on anyone who comes near their settlement at Nellis Air Force Base. Talk about rude. If they can be convinced to fire those big cannons at the Legion, or NCR though, well, that'd be neat, wouldn't it? Any the cons are just, they're a dirty people. They live in tents like animals, and they're very rude. They've been kicked around a lot, but no one's finished them off. Not yet, anyway. They were one of the tribes the three families pushed out of Vegas. A whole bunch got killed. So they settled at Bitter Springs, but they kept being so obnoxious, the NCR had to kill a whole bunch more of them. So then, they settled at Red Rock Canyon. There's just no getting rid of them. Any hmm. I remember that Benny used to pay a receptionist at Gamora for information. Maybe she knows something. Just that Benny didn't like them. He talked on and on about how they couldn't be trusted. And this is coming from Benny. He hated their casino, said it was tacky. And he thought they were up to something, because he said they always are. When any... From what I understand, they're perfectly delightful. They're cultured, clean, and super polite. Benny didn't like them, though. He said they were creepy. Don't hurry up. It makes me feel really dumb to admit this, but I don't actually know. I've never been inside the Lucky 38. No one has. Mr. House is in there, though. It's the central node of his entire network. You have? Wow, that's amazing. You can murder Mr. House whenever you want. I mean, Benny was always scheming about how he was going to get into the Lucky 38, but you already took care of that. Wow. The other thing you're going to need is the platinum chip. You know, the one Benny killed a courier for over near Good Springs. I knew she was carrying the platinum chip, and I knew right where Benny should wait for her. That's why Benny put me here, to monitor Mr. House's data transmissions. They're all encrypted, of course, but I'm quite a decryptor. Did you know that Mr. House spent 812,545 caps Hiring salvage teams to find the platinum chip? Just in the last year alone? Of course you didn't! Or that there were seven couriers, but six of them were carrying junk! How about their exact route and the mercenary teams that screened them? I knew all that. Pretty smart, huh? Of course you do! Sorry about that! And it's wonderful that you do! The Platinum Chip is the key to overriding and exploiting Mr. House's defenses. Did I just say exploiting? That's not a very nice word. I'll be waiting right here. You dig this crazy scene or what? The 
The eyes of the mighty Kaisar are upon you. He admires your accomplishments and bestows upon you the exceptional gift of his mark. Any crimes you may have perpetrated against the Legion are hereby forgiven. Kaisar will not extend this mercy a second time. My lord requires your presence at his camp at Fortification Hill. His mark will guarantee your safe conduct through our lands. I am the greatest of Kaisar's frumentari. It was not a challenge to find you. Nor is this my first visit to the Strip. Seek Kaisar by way of Cottonwood Cove, south of Nelson. The Corsor Lucullus will be waiting. You eyeballing me?
You can't help but notice that the Brotherhood barely exists to these people out here. We're like an urban myth, no real presence on the outside. We just don't adapt like we should. Used to be that all you needed to get your way was a suit of power armor and a laser rifle. Now, people are armed and organized. They're not afraid. But we still stick to our old approach because it's all we know. Yeah, but only if you've got bodies to fill the suits. We don't take on new members. We're all descendants from the original Brotherhood. Something's gonna have to change, or the empty suits are gonna be all that's left of us. Hey! Should have brought something to read. Aw, just. Uh oh. You know, I've been thinking. The real problem with the Brotherhood is that we isolate ourselves. Our training is top-notch, our technology gives us an advantage, but when it all comes down to it, we're losing because we shun the outside world. We always make enemies, never allies. We refuse to recruit outsiders or see the value in their simpler technologies. I don't know. I'm still thinking about what kind of role we could take on that would give us the best chance of survival. But I think things are starting to come together. I know the odds aren't good, but I gotta try. I can't lose them.
Hold on. I've got this. I'd like a large atomic shake and a double Brahmin burger. And easy on the agave sauce this time. We gave you a password, Veronica. It's for your safety. I know where you live, Ramos. Open up. <sighs> for Pete's sake. Opening up. Welcome back, Veronica. Listen up. I'm in charge of security around here. And I can't say I'm too happy about having an outsider waltzing around. But since you came in with Veronica, I'm inclined to cut you a little slack. Just behave yourself, and we won't have any problems, okay? Oh, and the Elder's going to want to talk to you. He's on the second level. Just take a right once you get down there. My office is right here in case you need anything. Just ask for Ramos. Looking sharp, Ramos. Pay yourself, kiddo. When Paladin Ramos informed me that Veronica was approaching with an outsider in tow, at first I didn't know what to think. After giving the matter some thought, however, I've decided that an outsider could be of use to me right now. However, I will not force you to help us. Should you refuse, you will be allowed to leave here, though you'd remain Veronica's responsibility. What do you say, outsider? Are you willing to help us? Then allow me to explain our situation. This bunker is currently locked down, allowing no entry or exit, with you being one of the few exceptions. In exceptional cases, teams are sent out to investigate sites or retrieve materials deemed too important to ignore. Three such teams have gone missing recently, and the news of their disappearance has not yet been widely spread to avoid undue concern. In order to maintain the peace and adhere to the strictures of the lockdown, I need to send someone else to discover what happened to them. I'm glad I can count on you. Oh, and one other thing. The patrols each had a holotape detailing their missions that you can use to track them. The shielding of the bunker prevents us from actively tracking them, but their positions should show up on your map once you get to the surface. Should our worst fears become realized, please bring back all three of the holotapes from the patrols. Otherwise, bring our brothers home. I've given the order that you be given access to some of the equipment our scouts and patrols have scavenged over the years. You won't be allowed to purchase any prohibited equipment, but hopefully some of what's available will prove useful to you. So, you're the outsider that's been given leave to wander around freely. Desperate times call for desperate measures, I guess. Name's Harden. I'm the head paladin of this chapter, and I think we might be able to help each other out. 
I don't know what the Elder talked to you about, but I can tell you this chapter is in trouble. And he's at the center of it. Are you willing to listen to what I have to say? As you may have already heard, this entire base is under a state of lockdown. No one goes out except small patrols at night. Most of the chapter has been sealed in here for years. And those few who are outside when the lockdown was initiated are forbidden from returning. Morale has plummeted as time has gone by. And many of our current paladins haven't seen combat outside of training simulations. And all because of the Elder's explicit order that no one be allowed in or out. The only way things will change is if a new Elder is installed. Veronica's a special case. She handles the procurement of supplies. If we didn't let her and those like her back in, we'd all starve. If the Elder could manage it, he'd shut them out as well, and all in the name of security, which is why we need to replace him. I don't know. I've gone through our records dozens of times looking for a precedent regarding the dismissal of an Elder and come up with nothing. The people who are most likely to know how it could be done are also some of McNamara's strongest supporters so they refuse to help me, which is why we're having this conversation. An outsider such as yourself would arouse less suspicion asking questions about such matters. The fact that the Elder has some tasks for you means his faithful won't suspect you, and you have a line open to the man himself. In short, you're in a perfect position to help me. Will you at least think about it? If I become Elder, the lockdown will be lifted and we'll once again be able to send patrols out into the wastes. We'll become powerful again. And when that happens, it will be good to have the Brotherhood as an ally. Good enough? That'll have to do. I'd recommend going to see Ramos first. As head of security, he's more familiar with our protocols than anyone else here. You could also try to find something relevant in our data store, though last I heard Scribe Ibsen is having a bit of a problem accessing it. And if McNamara should give you any tasks, I'd ask that you kept me abreast of them. Report anything you find to me, and we'll move from there. Pardon? I hope you've been practicing your drills, Veronica. It's dangerous outside. How may I assist you? Don't work too hard there, Ibsen. Your presence here, let's just say it's highly irregular. Outsiders aren't even allowed to know that our bunker's here, let alone come and go freely. You impressed Elder McNamara, obviously. He must believe that you'd be very useful. So, you've been talking to Harden, eh? He's been looking for a way to usurp McNamara ever since the lockdown started. Don't get me wrong, he's a good man. But Elder McNamara has done all right by us. If it weren't for him, none of us would have survived at Helios. I'll tell you what I told Harden. There have been only a few cases of Elders being dismissed from their posts in the Brotherhood's history. And those involve crimes that someone like Elder McNamara is just not capable of. You can look it up for yourself if you want. I'll grant you access to that portion of the history section of our data store. See Senior Scribe Ibsen about accessing it. That's right. Nothing gets in or out of here without me knowing it. Under the lockdown, only essential personnel are permitted to enter or leave. That includes supply runners and high security patrols. All other personnel are forbidden to leave, and any personnel that were out there when the lockdown was enacted are forbidden from returning. I'm sure someone's told you all this before. Several years back, we were running our chapter out the Helios One solar power station. Our elder at the time, Elijah, had some kind of obsession with the place, which is the only reason we stayed as long as we did. That place was hardly defensible, and we knew the NCR was moving in on us, but the elder refused to budge, insisting that he just needed more time. 
We never found out what he needed time for. Wave upon wave of NCR troopers hit us from all directions. We held out for a time, but we were grossly outnumbered, and they had more men than we had ammo. Eventually, our positions collapsed. Elder Elijah was nowhere to be found, so McNamara took charge and led what remained of us on a counteroffensive west. We lost a lot of men and women, but we broke through and made it here. Make no mistake, McNamara saved this chapter that day. Who was Elijah more like? He was our elder before McNamara. Bright guy, but just between you and me, he was a little off. Our mission is to recover and preserve the technology of the past, but Elijah wanted more. He sought ways to improve upon technology, make it better. When we found Helios One, he was like a kid in a candy store. He kept talking about the potential and a grand design never realized. He even insisted we set up our base there, against the objection of nearly every paladin. What followed is a whole other story.
Halt! What business have you in Cottonwood Cove, outsider? Very well, you may proceed. However, be warned. Aggressive acts against us will earn you a place on a cross. Away. Are you ready to head up river? The trip will take a few hours. Take your place on the boat. Hey, you got a second? The Brotherhood is failing. I've always known that. If we don't change course, we're going to fall apart or fade away. But until recently, I haven't understood where we went wrong or how to fix it. I think I need to go home. Great! Thanks! Thank you! I'll encourage people to name their non-ugly children after you. Seriously. By order of Kaisar, all visitors must disarm and relinquish all banned items. This order also extends to the platinum chip you carry. For now. Your belongings will be returned to you when you leave. Awe. Some of the slaves have been spreading stories about the burned man again. Kaiser. Hey, anything going on? You must enter Kaisar's tent alone. Anyone else must remain outside. You must enter Kaisar's tent. You must enter Kaisar's tent. 
Should have brought something to read. So I finally get to meet the courier who's accomplished so much in so little time. That's why I summoned you here, right? I mean, a man nearly kills you, and your response is to track him across the breadth of the Mojave? You arrive on the strip and waltz into the Lucky 38 like someone left you a key under the doormat? You assassinate the head of the chairman in his own casino and get away with it? When you set your mind to something, you get results. I like that. The question is, are you ready to get started? I like the servile attitude. Keep it up. The time is fast approaching when my legion will assault the Great Dam and invade the West. Before that happens, I want Mr. House knocked out of the game. A quick one-two punch, with you doing the punching. Down the hill, at the west edge of camp, is an old building. It was here when the fort was taken in 2277. Inside the building is a hatch. And inside that hatch are two steel doors that bear the sigil of the Lucky 38 Casino. Now that same sigil is on the platinum chip you were carrying. Isn't that interesting? Even more interesting, there's a slot about the same size as the chip on the console that opens the hatch. So you know what I think? I think the platinum chip opens those doors. Doors that can't be pried open or drilled open or blasted open. Because all that, I tried. I don't know, and I don't like not knowing. I know Mr. House built it. I'm thinking it's probably some kind of weapon that he can't activate from a distance. I want you to destroy whatever you find in there, and then I want you to come back here and tell me about it. So go to the building and take this fucking platinum chip with you. My legionaries will meet you there, with your weapons and equipment. Goodbye. Aw, just when the stand... None may enter without Caesar's permission. Caesar has permitted your weapons to be returned to you while you serve him. Caesar has put a lot of trust in you. Be worth it. Awe, true to Caesar. here ahead of schedule. I suppose it's just as well. This is where I wanted you to end up after all. I knew I could rely on Caesar to give you back the platinum chip. Ah, 
That you were searched very thoroughly when you arrived at the fort is a certainty. And as the chip is a little too large to be secreted away, I also regard it a certainty that the chip was discovered, taken from you, and given to Caesar, who returned it to you. Two plus two equaling four, Caesar wants you to destroy whatever you find in this bunker. But that's not going to happen, because you're going to work for me. It's a facility I built many years before you were born. You might think of it as a kind of barracks. You'll understand soon enough. Was that meant to be a shocking revelation? Of course Caesar wants it destroyed. He's afraid of what the bunker might hold, and rightly so. But you're not going to do that. You're going to do the smart thing, and work for me. The platinum chip is a data storage device. I need you to manually upload the data from the chip to the facility's primary computer. There's a terminal at the other end of this facility. There's a complication. While I can broadcast to this screen, I can't control any of the facility's systems. That means I can't deactivate its security bots, most of which appear to be active according to the status board I'm looking at. The same equipment failure that prevents me from remotely operating this facility seems to have activated its security robots and turrets. There's a security room near the base of the stairs. Perhaps you can deactivate them yourself. My army will do what an army does best, defend territory from invaders and maintain order. I like to think you have enough sense to do the right thing. The rewards for doing so are immense, as are the punishments for not doing so. Stand clear. This is... Beats wait until they shoot me first.
Your work here is done. Return to the Lucky 38 so we can discuss next steps. You have a very bright future ahead of you. Thanks to your actions today, so does the rest of mankind. Some of the slaves have been spreading. You've carried out Kaisar's will, but I must confiscate your equipment again. You're free to leave. Stories about the burned man. Some of the slaves. You must enter Kaisar's tent. Should have brought something to read. I felt the ground shake a while ago. I'll take that as a sign you've got the job done. Let's press on, shall we? As I was telling you before, I want Mr. House out of the picture. You have an interest in his death, too. If he knows that you destroyed his gadgets beneath the fort, he will strike back. You know where to find him. How he dies, I leave up to you. It's called an auto doc. As the name suggests, it's an automated physician, more or less. He can treat broken bones, cuts, punctures, scrapes. Sometimes I bestow its use upon someone I favor. Makes for a powerful gift in a culture that forbids painkillers and is largely ignorant of medical science. Good. Don't know what kind of security he has inside the Lucky 38, but if you can find a way of catching him off guard, do so. Awe, true to Kaisar. being watched, so don't get any ideas. Hello, Veronica. How goes your mission? We'll know in a second. I wanted to talk to you. Veronica, tell me this isn't about... Yes, goddammit, it is. 
But you're gonna hear me out this time. We've been through this. The things I've seen now, other groups succeeding where we fail, it's not too late for us. We've outlasted the end of the world. We'll outlast these upstarts. Waiting in a hole for everyone else to die. If we must. This is a dead end for us. I see no evidence of that. Nor do I see anyone out there with a solution to our problems. How could you? You're too scared to look. Let's go. We're wasting our time. Found the missing patrols, or was something else on your mind? While that is disheartening news, there remains hope that the other two patrols may still be found alive. See me as soon as you found them. What'd you think of Mr. House? I was surprised he only had the two robot sex slaves. I'd slap him around, but he stood at my parents' wedding. Plus, he used to make excuses to get me out of my punishment when I'd slept through head scribe Taggart's lectures. Figure I owe him for that. <sighs> he means well. No, but it does make it easier to forgive him. He's just misguided. It's not too late to change his mind. He's a stubborn old man, but when it comes down to it, he's got our best interests at heart. If he sees some indisputable sign we're on the wrong course, he won't ignore it. I don't know. I don't know. We need something that shows the Brotherhood will fail. Or that it can do better a different way. The only thing that gets his attention is technology. Huh. Maybe Father Elijah had the right idea. Our elder before McNamara. He had a nose for recovering lost technology. He'd send scribes out into the desert, chasing whatever leads he found. There were a few he only trusted me with. I can think of at least one that'd prove my point, if it still exists. There's a comm terminal not too far from here I'd use to access messages from him. If we go there, I can pull up his research on it. That's my question to the Elder. All these years, the Brotherhood has collected weapons technology. And for what? To keep it out of people's hands? That clearly hasn't worked. To defend ourselves? We can't compete with the NCR's numbers, or the Legion's. We're fighting a war for a lost cause. If we're gonna survive, we have to find a role in society, attract new members. Look at the followers of the Apocalypse. They use their expertise to improve people's lives. They train them to be self-sufficient. That expertise cultivates respect and gratitude, spreads their ideals, draws talent to their cause. They make friends like we make enemies. But they don't know a fraction of what we know. If we took on their role, we could stand up to anyone. We wouldn't have to hide. I'm with you. Being around here isn't the same anymore. What is this? Veronica brings an outsider into our home, then has a private audience with the Elder? The two of you may have the Elder fooled, but we know better. Veronica has always twisted the Founder's principles to her own ends. We will not stand idly by and allow her to corrupt our Elder's thinking. Sorry about that. Just because I love them doesn't mean some of them aren't assholes. Evening.
What can I do for you? That's not... Morning. What can I do for you? Yeah. Pleasure doing business with you. Are you sure? You won't be able to read in the dark as well. Okay. Though you aren't of the Legion, you've aided us more than once. We acquire many items on our raids, some useless to us, some forbidden. I've provided you the location of a drop box where you can obtain these items. The box will be replenished every few days. Please be aware that we'll assume any items left in the box will be unwanted and be removed and destroyed. Stay an ally of the Legion and we will share our loot with you. If you start working against us or become an enemy, our deal ends. True to Kaiser. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, yeah, this is the one I was thinking of. The pulse gun. Although, maybe the rangefinder could work too. And it looks like the NCR was onto some miracle farming technology. Electromagnetic weapon from before the Great War. Experimental. It never saw mass production. But they were building it as a countermeasure to power armor, which they feared the Chinese were developing. Supposedly a prototype was being housed at Nellis. Imagine what it could do to the Brotherhood. We'd be on equal footing with any idiot with a gun. Hmm, 
more or less. Supposedly, it's a vegetation enhancer. NCR has a science branch headquartered at McCarran Airport. Guess they found something. Guess somebody wasn't very good at keeping secrets either. We'd never pursue it because it's not a weapon, but self-sufficiency is fundamental to us. If it works, they'd see the value of an alternate course. It's a targeting device for some kind of doomsday weapon based at Helios-1. It was lost sometime after the war. We held Helios-1 for a time. Lost a lot of people defending it. Too many. All for this weapon they never got working. If it turns out to be a dud, it would show how flawed our goals have been. Father Elijah said he thinks a scavenger might have sold it on the strip. They defended Helios like it was their last stand. Didn't even know if there was anything worth defending. How could there be, with all we lost? Even if it did work, it'd be under NCR control now. So it'd either prove our goals are wrong, or we're incapable of pursuing them. There's a pawn shop in Outer Vegas we could check, and I've heard of a gift shop in the Strip that deals in pre-war antiques. I like the way you think. Obedience is virtual. It's hard to sleep in this place, I tell you. Last night, some girl was pounding on my door. Hi, I'm Sarah, Sarah Weintraub. Welcome to the finest vault hotel in the whole world. I 
all sorts of things. Vault souvenirs, vault wares, vault machines, vault mementos, and vault suits. And, well, lots of other vault things, too. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, I got these great lunch boxes. They're super. What else? Oh, oh, look at these toasters. You like toast, right? If they're crunchy, even better. What about a vintage vault tech toy car? Or... Wow, I wish I had more of them. All this interest to be my biggest seller. I sold it to a man not too long ago. Real twitchy, nervous sort of guy. Kind of seemed like he was wigging out about something. Had a funny collar on. I wanted to ask him about it, but I figured maybe I'd regret asking. People are weird around here. Well, it was metal and kind of thick. At first I thought he'd come from Gomorrah, but they're more into leather there. Didn't look comfortable. He kept reaching up like he was going to itch it, but he always stopped himself. Oh, he was pretty average, I'd say. Average height, average age, dark hair, beard of some kind. No, but I know where he was going. He asked me if I knew of any place where he could hide out for a while. Wanted somewhere with concrete walls. Something about airwaves. I forget. But I guess he spent all his money on the rangefinder because he said it had to be somewhere free to stay. I said I didn't know about anything like that around here, but if he wanted to live for free, a lot of people do that in Freeside. I know there's a concrete building there across from Mick and Ralph's. No ceiling, but I think it still counts. Went up there one time to try and, you know, meet my neighbors in the biz. But, you know, I don't think they took me very seriously. Kids run by sometimes. Bang, 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 bang. Reach for the sky, lady. This is the best gun in the whole galaxy. I paid a million caps for it, and it wasn't even brand new. Well, if you can get me most of it, I could give you a loan for the rest. I don't really Sorry, but I need to shoot Stacy. We can find you another gun. So long. Reach for the sky. I'll be shooting soon. Bang, 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 bang! Thank you. 
Where to, partner? Enjoy all the Vegas Strip has to offer. So, Benny has been handled, and you've recovered the platinum chip. Let's have it. I'll be happy to satisfy your every curiosity once the platinum chip has been delivered. Our terms were clear. Now that you have the chip in your possession, any attempt to renegotiate payment would be tantamount to blackmail. Hmm, how shall I put this? Delivery of the platinum chip is non-negotiable. I invite you to think carefully about what you do next. Standing alone before me, surrounded by my heavily armed Securitron guards. By the time I was 30 years old, I was a billionaire 30 times over. I founded and ran a vast economic empire. Do you really think I'm going to let an upstart come into my home and ransom my property to me? I spent two centuries searching for the Platinum Chip. It's my invention, my property, mine! Now be a good courier and deliver it! You needn't be afraid of me. It's my Securitrons that are going to kill you. And you Still searching.
Why have you done this? Centuries of preparation. So much good undone. Your vanity project doomed to fail. Engaging target. Aw, oh, just when the stand. Welcome to the Vegas Strip. Excuse me, but are you the courier who caused all of that trouble in the tops? Oh, well, I heard, I mean, we heard, we meaning the followers of the apocalypse, that you had been in there, the Lucky 38, I mean, and we were wondering if you could help us, if it's not too much trouble, of course. Oh, great. The followers of the apocalypse, well, some of us anyway, have been interested in Mr. House's technology, how he stays alive. Of course, no one else is allowed inside the Lucky 38, so no one knows what's going on. Well, except for you. Right. We just want to find out what sort of technology Mr. House has used to stay alive for all these years. It could be of great benefit to the people we try to help, many of whom suffer from hard-to-diagnose illnesses. Really? Oh, I wasn't expecting you to agree so easily. That's great. Here, take this packet sniffer. It'll allow us to intercept data on Mr. House's network. You might have to manually remove the encryption from his data network, but hopefully you won't have too much trouble. Good luck. Hey, hey, baby doll. Welcome to the Top Hotel. Oh, now that we got that little busy. Hello? The way I hear it, some big leaguer NCR rangers are coming to town to dance a two-step all over Caesar's head. Ring-a-ding, baby. Baby, it's as tense How's as a virgin hanging? at Gamora out there. Things are heating up. Oh, hi 
again. Can I help you with something else? You already took care of Mr. House? Wow, you work fast. Please, go on. Okay, consider them forgotten, along with the projections that predict they'll be our biggest enemy. Forgotten! That's one down, four to go. <laughs> Mr. House is out of the picture and you have the platinum chip? Wonderful, let's go. Baby, it's as tense as a virgin at Gomorrah out there. Things are heating up. The way I hear it, some big leaguer NCR rangers are coming to town. Trying to dance a two step all over Caesar's head. Fucking Crocker couldn't find his ass if it wasn't on his backside. Beg your pardon, but could I trouble you to turn over your weapons? My deepest apologies for the slightest inconvenience. You have my assurance that everything will be returned upon your departure. But we simply can't have anyone waving their weapons around in the hotel. It's not the atmosphere we wish to cultivate. Please, enjoy your stay. Farewell. You look like you'd be more at home at one of the other hotels. Looks like the war's ratcheting up. I hear the NCOs bringing in elite troops. Humbly at your service. How many chips would you like? Is the How may I be of service, madam? My, such a popular question. I suppose it is only natural to see us and wonder what it is that makes us special. The White Glove Society has only just made itself known to the public, of course. It was established over... generations. Were we always so refined? <laughs> I'd be lying if I said yes. But I've always felt we were destined for a place atop modern society. And now, here we are. Not everyone can wear the finest clothes and eat the finest foods, obviously. That's just the reality we live in. 
But surely we can agree that the most tasteful, sophisticated people are the most deserving. And that's what the White Glove Society is all about. No, not from the likes of you, I'm afraid. I don't think you'd have the stomach for it. Better look elsewhere. Strips all stirred up late. Lately? Hey. Welcome to the Ultralux. I do hope it exceeds your every expectation. I do, but one can hardly call it work. I think of myself as a caretaker rather than a common laborer. I suppose it is a labor of love if it can be called labor at all. We at the White Glove Society are all responsible for maintaining the beauty and class of the Ultralux. And as its founder, I suppose it falls to me to decide how we go about it. Ta-ta! How do you fare? I've heard the Legion's planning to unleash their best men against us. I've heard the Legion's planning to unleash their best men against us. Strips all stirred up lately.
Papa says, cut off the head and the snake will die. I guess the chairman's days are numbered. I haven't seen you before. What brings you to the Great Khans? Name's Regis. I'm Papa Khan's advisor and right-hand man. I'm also the chief enforcer of the tribe's laws, so watch your behavior. Papa is one of the best leaders the Khans have ever had. He's kept us together through all of our hardships, ever since we left California. Bitter Springs changed him, though. He started to really hate the NCR after the massacre. And sometimes, I worry that's poisoned his mind. Nothing. Forget about it. I shouldn't be talking about this with an outsider. That's a complicated question. They've done horrible things to our people, to be sure. And I've gladly killed many of their soldiers in battle. But I can't bring myself to hate them the way Papa does. Things would damn sure be better for us if they were in charge than Caesar. I suppose if asked, I would. But that's a moot point, because Papa's in charge now. And he's not going anywhere. I like you, stranger. You've stood by us when not many would. You're the one making a name for yourself among the troops, aren't you? What is it you need? My name is Carl. Glorious Caesar has sent me as an emissary to the Great Khans as a token of our alliance. Though they have been cruelly oppressed by the NCR, the Khans remain great warriors. The Legion is honored to have such allies in battle. In exchange for Great Caesar's promise of all the lands west of New Vegas, the Khans have agreed to fight alongside the Legion when the time comes. I am one of the Frumentari. It is my duty to scout the waste in Caesar's name and make contact with any tribes that might serve a useful purpose. You might say I'm somewhere between a scout and an ambassador. I'm assigned here as part of the alliance between the Legion and the Great Khans. Hello. Hello. It's good to have you here. I really don't like to talk about it. Let's just say it was a tragedy, and the NCR is to blame, and we'll leave it at that.
Good to see you again. So the cub enters the wolf's den. What do you want, cub? Have you now? Hmm, well, you're a bold one, I'll give you that. But why should I do this for you? Doesn't he? Caesar's representative tells a different tale. The glory of the great cons will be restored, and once the NCR is pushed back to California, all the land from here to the Colorado will be ours. I won't hear any more talk against Caesar or his alliance. The great cons will answer Caesar's call to war, and the NCR will pay for their crimes. Hey. So the cub enters the wolf's den. Have you now? Ha! The great cons will not be slaves. Caesar himself has promised us the land from here to the Colorado and the freedom to raid as we see fit. I won't hear any more. You march on. I, I like you, stranger. Like you. You've stood by us when not many would. So the cub enters the wolf's... Have... Don't you dare mention the NCR under this roof. They are butchers without honor, killers of women and children. I won't hear it. saying that the NCR is sending in their elite shock troops to try and push back the Legion. The runners are saying that the NCR is sending in their elite shock troops to try and push back the Legion. So the cub enters the wolf. You want to hear the story of the great... In a hurry, are you? Very well. But we under... They allied with Mr. House, the self-proclaimed master of New Vegas. He supported them with the resources of New Vegas. Weapons, technology, caps. They were better equipped, and we could not stand against them. When the NCR came to the Mojave, we thought they would be easy pickings. We raided their caravans, their towns, their camps. They couldn't stop us. At least that's what we thought. They tracked us to Bitter Springs and surrounded us. When our children, our sick and old, fled through a nearby pass, the NCR gunned them down. Oh, they claimed it was a miscommunication, but tell that to those who saw our families butchered. Tell it to the survivors who were banished here. T Have you now? Hmm, well, you're a bold one, I'll give you that. But why should I do this for you? Ha! Good to see you again.
I heard you try to convince Papa Khan not to join with Caesar's Legion. I'd like to talk to you about that for a moment. You want to convince Papa not to ally with Caesar, right? Trust me, you'll get nowhere just talking to him about it. He's fixated on restoring the glory of the great cons, and he sees Caesar as the path to that restoration. Papa can be a stubborn man, but he's not a tyrant. He listens to his tribe, and to four voices in particular, me, Jack, Diane, and Melissa. If you can convince all of us that allying with Caesar is a bad idea, you might be able to sway him. I have my doubts about Caesar, yes, but I won't publicly go against Papa Khan based on nothing more than doubts. I've heard rumors that tribes who aligned with Caesar in the past were torn apart and reduced to slaves. Prove it, and I'll back you. You'd have to talk to them, but those two have been thick as thieves since they were kids. Convince one, and the other will come around. Ah, Melissa. She's a bit of a dreamer. Last time she was in camp, Carl filled her head with stories of serving the Legion as a speculatore. Personally, I've never seen a woman in Legionnaire's armor, so I have my doubts. I would too, if I were you. Good to see you again. Hey! Something else you wanted? What do you want to know? That chip of yours? I wouldn't wager it on Blackjack. Unless the dealer has a five or six showing. What? Yeah, maybe they'll think twice about engaging the NCR if they know one of those could be floating around. The notes say to look around Nellis Air Force Base. He suggests going through filing cabinets and computers in the commanding officer's quarters.
It's hard to sleep in this place, I tell you. Last night, some girl was... NCR should take this chance now that Mr. House is out of the way. Welcome to the NCR Embassy. How can I help you? Ambassador Crocker can be found in his office through the door to my right and at the end of the hall. Ma'am? NCR should take this chance now that Mr. House is out of the way. It was a matter of time before someone got to Mr. House. Hello? I won't be missing Mr. House. That's a gift. Strip's better off without me. Hello? I'm glad you could make it. I have something I wanted to discuss with you. It's a very important matter, and I have a strong feeling you're the perfect person for the job. I'm sure you've noticed that things are a little tense around here with all the issues between the NCR, the Legion, and Mr. House. It doesn't take a genius to see that something big is going to happen soon. To be honest with you, the NCR is in a tight spot. But if we fail now, it's the people here that are going to suffer the most. I'm not willing to let that happen, and I don't think you're the kind of person that would either. To the northeast is a settlement. The locals here call them boomers. They are sitting on a munition stockpile that would be invaluable to us. I would like you to get in contact with them, and then do whatever it takes to convince them to help us. Unfortunately, the boomers keep to themselves and are, let's say, hostile to all outsiders. That's why I need someone like you. Someone with your background and reputation would have a better chance of reaching them than anyone I have available. In exchange for your help, you would receive complete amnesty for any past crimes against the NCR, as well as additional benefits and perks. Do you think you would be able to do this for me? Much appreciated. Once you've talked to them, come back and let me know if they will help us.
Welcome back. Have you re- Well, I know- If you may- Okay, here you go. That page has the details, but it's all in the timing as you move from building to building. I'll be here watching, so I'll know if you've made it to the gate or not. Remember, there's 600 caps in it if you make it. Looks like the war's ratcheting up. I hear the NCR is bringing in. Over here.
Over here. Howdy. Should have brought something to read. Hold it right there. Don't you move. How the hell did you survive that bombardment?
but I had you zeroed in the whole time. Nobody's that fast. Move a muscle now and I'll blow you to pieces. Then just... just stay where you are. Raquel will be here any second. I'll take this from here. I'm Raquel, Master at Arms for the Nellis Homeland. Mother Pearl, our eldest, wishes to speak to you. As I said, she is our eldest. Mother Pearl has lived at Nellis from the start, and has the wisdom of her age. She said that this day would come, and that any savage to reach our gate should be brought to her. I oversee the security of the Nellis homeland, from the coordination of its defense to the training and fitness of its population. I wasn't the one firing the howitzers. If you want to see how good I am at killing savages, I can show you. Or you can accept Mother Pearl's invitation. It's your choice. Follow close, and mind your behavior. Welcome, child. Took your sweet time getting here, didn't you? I've been waiting a good five years for an outsider to come along and visit. Prophecy. Do we look like a bunch of religious idiots? I just hoped a savage, oh, outsider, sorry, would make it to our gates before one of those armies out there comes knocking. That's right, child. Mother Pearl knows a storm is gathering. Times are changing. Maybe time for us to change a little, too. Oh, so many ways. Small ones to begin with, so we can get used to what it's like to have a sev... Uh, outsider around and about. Should that go well, it may be you can help in big ways, too. We'll have to see. You have to keep in mind that you're our first contact with the outside world since I was barely a woman. Seclusion has kept us safe, but the world around us is changing. Neon lights in the distance, patrolling robots, soldiers. My youngers think our guns can keep out the world, but I think we need to let it in just a little or become its victim. You're that little bit of the world, child. Welcome to Nellis. You picked a good time to stop by, for we're swimming in problems. My youngers can tell you all about it. Raquel could use help with the bug problem. Doc Argyle has wounded he's tending to. And Loyal and Jack might be looking for help with some repairs. Or you could just go see Pete at the museum and hear the story of our people. All you have to do there is listen. Come and go as you like, help or don't help, I leave it up to you. But I hope you'll show my youngers that not every outsider needs to be blown up. Hey. Evening. How is your visit with us going, stranger? I haven't heard anything. Each of the elder seek out Jack.
I know Mother Pearl is letting you wander Nellis as you please, outsider, but I have patience to tend to. Sorry, friend. I have three patients here who were gravely injured fighting those giant ants in the generator building a few days ago. I've stabilized their wounds, but they're in bad shape. Do you have medical training? Well, I don't know, actually. I suppose it's possible. You should take a look. Yes, Outsider? There's still... Hold her right there. You had no business treating that man. You may have spared him a lingering death, but that's straight-out malpractice. Evening. Mother Pearl's instructions are clear. You can move freely around Nellis, and artillery spotters have orders not to fire on you. These are extraordinary privileges. Don't abuse them. Long story short, the power failed a few days ago because giant ants have tunneled into the generator room and set up a nest. I led a team down to exterminate them, but there were so many of them. We lost. Two killed, three wounded. Personally, I think it's more than a savage can handle. But if you want to kill those ants and switch the power back on, feel free. Sure, anyone can. But there's more than a few down there. See for yourself. Oh, one other thing. The ants must be eating gunpowder from the munitions down there. Or something. They exploded when hit by a flamethrower. One of us was using a laser pistol. Same thing. Bullets seem okay, just don't hit the artillery shells. Loyal's been working on some kind of weapon to use against them. Maybe you should check with him. Jumping Jesus on a pogo stick. You're the first one to make it through alive, let alone manage a return trip. Yep, here are your caps. You drive a hard bargain. Here you go. Have a nice day. Aw, oh, just when the standing...
Hello. So you're the outsider. Lived your whole life out there, huh? Wow. I always thought you savages probably spoke a different language. But I hear you sound like us. What I could use is some scrap metal. It may not sound exciting, but around here we have to recycle every rivet and plate. The other thing, you being from the outside and all, well, I guess you'd call it a personal matter, but, well, ah, uh, forget it. That must be nice, sharing yourself like that, not being embarrassed or anything. Well, the thing is, there's this girl. Oh, you can't miss her. She has short red hair and she's the most beautiful woman who ever lived. You'd really talk to her for me? What if she feels the same way? What if she comes here like you did? What if she gets blown up? What if she doesn't like me? Oh, jeez. I better just let you handle it. I'm better with machines. They don't make my stomach queasy like this. That would be amazing. As in, I would thank you forever. The outsider, Mother Pearl sent word that you'd be stopping by. You must be eager to hear the story of our people. Gosh, there's a lot of folks. Argyle's our doctor. He could use help tending to any injured we got. Over at the workshop, Loyal and Jack are always building something. The Loyal may not be too happy to see your kind running around Nellis. Me? I'm Pete, keeper of the story. I know I seem kind of young. I was the apprentice keeper of the story until a couple months ago, but old keeper Don, well, whiskey and landmines don't go together. So it's up to me. I bet you want to know everything about us. Wonderful. I'm sure you've noticed the mirror on the wall of this hut. Shall I tell you what it all means? Excellent. Imagine you're the first outsider to ever hear our tale. <clears throat> Ages ago, long before I was born, we lived underground. Everyone had guns, but the overseer wouldn't let us explode anything. 
Not even a hand grenade. We left and wandered the wastes. They were savages with knives. We blew them up with frag mines and grenades. Burned them with flamethrowers. It was neat, but there was a downside. For every 43.6 savages we killed, we lost one of our own. We needed a new home. We needed Nellis. Here we have prospered and multiplied. Here our mighty guns destroy any savages who might try to harm us before they can even reach our gates. Well, until... But... Not saying you want to harm us or you're a savage, but anyways... Nellis has re revealed many secrets. It has taught us how to fly the bombers once based here, and it has taught us where to find one. And that is our story so far. For this last image is our future. To restore the bomber, to fly the open skies in armored safety, renting high explosive ordnance upon ignorant savages. This is our destiny. I'm pleased that you listened to the entire story. Perhaps there are details you'd like to know more about. Let me know. Now that you know the story of our... Ask away. So you know about the vaults? Yes, we lived in one of those. Ours was numbered 34. In our vault, everyone had guns. But the overseer wouldn't let you fire off any of the really fun ones. I guess all the little pops and bangs at the firing ranges just got boring after a while. And at Nellis, we found it. We haven't detonated any atomic warheads since before I was born. But otherwise, it's do as you will. Anything else you want to know? Several automatic warheads detonate here a hundred years ago leaving the base highly radioactive. The savages of the Waste, ignoramuses, all avoided Nellis by habit. That's right. Our Geiger counter indicates that the base was radioactive, but not dangerously so. Enough time has passed. Anything else you want to know? Nellis is a completely self-sufficient community. We draw water from Lake Mead, solar arrays provide power, and we grow our own crops. Thank you. Our self-sufficiency is a point of pride. Anything else you want to know? You're right, they weren't here when we discovered Nellis. We found the guns at a huge weapon depot called Area 2, many miles from here. It took many weeks to drag the guns and their ammunition back to Nellis, and it was the last time any of us set foot beyond our homeland. Thank you so much. I'll be sure to pass that on. Anything else you want to know? Once we restore power, we learn that some elaborate chairs we've been sleeping in were actually virtual reality simulators. We believe they were used to train combat pilots. We use them extensively. I alone have shot down over 500 Chinese Zion 85 fighters. Before you ask, I'm afraid there's no way you can be allowed to use the simulators. They're for our use only. Sorry. That's beautiful. Yes, it's exactly like that. So free, so... Words can't do it justice. Anything else you want to know? Loyal found a file somewhere on the base, with magazine articles, photographs, a map even. It seems that a bomber, apparently the 29th of its kind, crashed in Lake Mead on July 21st, 1948. Just imagine, that's over 300 years ago. The photograph shows that it was basically intact, and the map tells us exactly where to find it. Except we haven't left Nellis in decades. It'll be spectacular, won't it? You should talk to Loyal. I bet you could help. I wish everyone were just as interested in our story as you are. 
Maybe I should act out the battles, or learn how to throw my voice. See ya. Sorry, no time to talk. I hope Pearl knows what she's doing, letting you wander around Nellis as you please. I started building a sonic emitter that might do the trick, but it's useless without knowing the exact frequency that would kill the ants. If you're willing to take the risk, be my guest. I've got it set to broadcast a powerful signal at 24,000 Hertz. Just place it near their nest and cross your fingers. Signal's too high for people to hear, so no harm done. But it might make you feel sick to your stomach. Watch your steps, sister. What's the situation with the giant ants? It's...
Gotcha. survived out here pretty well so far without any help from the outside. I see the power's back on. The ants are all dead? Maybe Pearl is right about you. Because I don't know how you pulled that off. I'll tell Loyal to send someone down to clear out the eggs and repair the generators. Good work.
How is your visit with us going, stranger? I do believe you've convinced one or two of us that it's better you made it here than we're blown to smithereens. You should go talk to Blake or Alice. They handle most of our contact with visitors. I watch all sorts of things with my binoculars. Who wants to know? And why? Nice looking blonde boy? I always wondered if he was watching me back. What's he like? Well, you don't have to do that anymore. Sounds like I better hurry to him. Any chance the boomers would let me visit Nellis? This is so exciting. Let me know how it turns out. How is your visit with us going, stranger? Well, well, this is welcome news. Who is she? She's with those traitors? They've tried to contact us before, but I'm not interested in trading with greedy savages. This presents a bit of a problem. Jack isn't allowed to leave Nellis, and I doubt she would make it through the artillery alive. Hmm. I suppose Jack deserves a chance at love. You can tell Jack she has a free pass to enter, but he is responsible for her actions. Do not make me regret this decision, outsider. Watch your step, sister. Have you seen her? The redhead of my dreams? She does? You mean it? That's incredible. What happens next? Can she come here? How do we make sure she doesn't get blown up? Should I talk to the gunners or to Pearl? Here, take this boomer outfit. I'll let the gunners know she's coming and not to shoot at her. What is it, outsider? If that's so, how about you look into repairing the solar arrays on the roof of the generator building? Nothing too complicated about it, but it's a long ways to walk my old bones, and there's been that ant problem over near there. You can't miss the array. It's on top of the generator building smack dab in the middle of Nellis between the two runways. Are you talking about that damn bright light we've seen blast off to the south occasionally? I was wondering what the hell that was. If they've got the parts, bring them on back. We need to get the array back up and charging. Be sure...
Hello again. How's your boomer friend? I was hoping you would. What's going on? Have they agreed to my safety yet? There's one more thing. I have a work contract with the Crimson Caravan, and if I walk away, I lose the wages they owe me. Could you do just one more thing for me and talk to Alice McLafferty about it? I know if I do it, she'll just say no. I'd hate to lose the money. Sounds like Mr. House is in some kind of trouble. Welcome to the Crimson Caravan Company, New Vegas branch. What may I do for you? Ah, yes. Her infatuation with a boomer she's never met. It's a small camp. More gets around. She's aware she's breaking her contract, which is undoubtedly why she sent you to talk to me instead of coming herself. Janet is free to leave, but she forfeits the wages she's owed. That's the price of contract breaking. Take it or leave it. Being sentimental is not how I made the Crimson Caravan so successful. But I'll allow it, just as once. Janet will be paid what she's owed. Consider it a gift. If you're looking to buy her... The whole future of New Vegas seems like it's up in the air. Guess I should wait things out before buying a condo in the Ultralux, huh? Step into my office. Have you spoken with McLafferty yet? That's great! I can't believe you went through all this trouble for me. Thank you. Hi. 
I can't believe I'm going to meet my red-headed lady soon. I'm really nervous about it. Like I said, I can never get enough scrap metal. Me? Loyal's a great man, but he's getting on in years. So a younger's gotta learn everything he knows. That'd be me. The man knows how to fix and build just about everything that was ever made. It's not easy keeping up with him. If you help him recover the lady, I figure... Oh, I figure it's been a nice day. Yeah, a real nice day. Did I say that? Sometimes I just say stupid things. Sorry about that. Pearl will tell you when the time comes. If... I mean... I should really be going. What is it, outsider? to finally meet you. Hi there. It's great to meet you as well. I'm glad... You made it out here. You're even more stunning up close than you were at a distance. And you're even more handsome up close. Do you think it'll be okay if I hang around here for a little while, so we can get to know each other better? Of course it would. I'll have you set up with some quarters with some of the other women. Thank you for getting Janet to Nellis. I've never been so happy in my entire life. Thank you for getting me here. Jack is a great guy. Hey. How is your visit with a- I do believe-
Over here. Got my eyes peeled. Got my eyes peeled.
Got my eyes peeled. What can I do for you? Are you...
reach for the sky. Yeah. Good night. Reach for the You mean it? Wow. Thanks. I bet me and Stacy can get something real cool at Mick and Ralph's with that. for the sky. By order of Kaisar, your Awe, true to Kaisar. You must enter Kaisar's. Should have brought something to read. Awe, true to Kaisar. I've read Mr. House's obituary. Had a high opinion of himself, didn't he? With Mr. House out of the way, I can focus on smoothing out a few lingering complications elsewhere in the Mojave. First up are the boomers of Nellis Air Force Base. A tribe so reclusive, it lobs artillery shells at anyone who comes near their settlement. I want you to offer them an alliance with my legion. My terms are simple. Target their guns against the NCR side of the dam when I assault it, and they can keep their freedom. If you find they aren't amenable to this offer, destroy them. Good. Your first challenge will be to reach their settlement without getting blown up. After that, it should be easy.
man. Who the hell are you? They bring you in to replace me? They're replacing me, aren't they? Ah, shit, man. You're direct. You're no nonsense. How am I supposed to compete with that? I gotta pay these chem bills. Aw, oh, man. How am I supposed to buy chems now? Fine. Here. What else? I'm in charge. This whole operation depends on me. No fantastic, no power. Got the whole NCR suckling my teats. And it feels so good. Well, see, we're getting power because the guy running this place is fantastic. But the mirrors outside aren't aimed right, so we're running at 1% efficiency. And I guess that just isn't good enough for some assholes. Trouble is, most of the controls for this place aren't here. They're in the tower. And that place has some crazy pre-war security system that the dumb shit NCR set off when they took over. Killed two guys. Now they won't go near it. They want me to make an omelet, but I can't break any of their eggs. Know what I'm saying? There's these two terminals outside. They control the mirrors. I tried fooling with them, but didn't get very far. You'd have to get them to talk to the mainframe up in the tower, then do the rest from up there. I'm guessing, but it sounds good, right? Hey, you're not thinking about going up there, are you? Well, hey, if you find yourself up at the mainframe, do yourself a favor and make sure you send the power to the right place. It needs to go to the Strip and McCarran. Because I get paid, that's why, per kilowatt hour, whatever the hell that is. That's where the NCR wants the power, so that's where I want it. But you know, you do that, maybe I put in a good word for you with them. Fantastic's little helper. There's a reputation you can hang your hat on. Here, you want this. It's the password to one of the terminals outside. Found it written on one of the stalls in the bathroom. We're supposed to be relieved any day. That's what I'm be telling them. Over here!
This place is off limits to civilians. If you don't like it, take it up with Lieutenant Haggerty. Why do we always hurt the ones we care about the most?
What's up? They defended him. Even if it... There's a pawn shop and... Thank you for visiting New Vegas. Hey, no one but Omeritas are allowed to carry guns into Gamora. Check your weapons with me. You'll get these back on your way out. Hello, and welcome to Gamora. What can I help you with today? I knew someone would call in that mark soon. What do you want to know? Sorry. They don't tell me their plans, and I don't want to know. I'm just happy they don't make me fuck anybody anymore. I sure do, but loose lips <laughs> sink ships. All right, you look pretty trustworthy. I hear you've actually been inside, Lucky 38. You're the first person who's been in there in as long as anybody can remember. Feel free to head to our club, Brimstone, or you can see our gorgeous courtyard out behind the casino. Not much of a rumor, but I hear the Tops is always looking for new talent. Lord knows they've needed it for a long time. It's hard to believe that not too long ago, most of the families on the Strip were little more than warring tribes. The Emeritus even had a big war with the Khans once upon a time. Sorry. We don't have any hotel rooms available right now, but feel free to gamble or help yourself to our other services. <sighs> All I can tell you is to find Kachino. 
He's the lowest level lieutenant you're going to be able to talk to. Some of the girls say he's been involved in some shady business the family wouldn't really like. Ask him about it. Later. chip off your hands. Thanks. Wish me luck. Wow. Mr. House had quite a setup here. I can access his data banks and view telemetry on every Securitron on the network. Wait. So, that's what the Platinum Chip does. Interesting. Mr. House had a whole demonstration planned for you. Just head downstairs to the lowest level to check it out. You'll see. Step closer to the demonstration area, please. Okay, so you're familiar with Securitrons by now, obviously. I mean, some of your best friends are Securitrons, right? <laughs> our titanium alloy housing does a good job for protecting our delicate electronic insides from small arms, fire, and shrapnel. Our left arm contains an X-25 adapting laser, quite deadly against our targets in medium range. That looks like a tunnel. And for close range suppression and crowd control, we have this handy dandy 9mm submachine gun. Nice. All of this is old hat, right? Here is where it gets interesting. Turns out that those are our secondary weapons. All this time we've been running the Mark I operating system, which doesn't have drivers for our primary weapons. Imagine! Now watch this. I'm downloading the Mark II OS to all Securitrons on the network. Makes quite a difference. With the M-235 missile launcher, we can engage a ram and air And a rapid-fire G-28 grenade launching system makes us deadly in close-range engagements. Woo! Look at that! The OS upgrade also includes drivers for our onboard auto repair systems. Just try to hurt us now! All together, this software upgrade confers a 235% increase in combat effectiveness per unit. New Vegas finally has soldiers worthy of protecting it. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. You can come back up and see me or be on your way. I know you're a busy person. An entire army of upgraded Securitrons just standing by over at the fort. Pretty neat, huh? Please, go on. Then consider them ignored. If they end up firing their howitzers at us, we'll ignore that too. Until it goes away. That's two down, three to go. If you say so. Consider them filed away under not to be discussed again. That's three down, two to go. You got it. I won't say another word about them. That's four down, just one to go. 
Say no more, say no more. If you say they're good, they're good. That accounts for all the tribes you needed to get to know. You did a super job wrapping things up, and I'm not just saying that because I have to. Here's some big news. I decoded a military radio transmission, and it turns out the NCR president, Aaron Kimball, is going to visit Hoover Dam. I guess he wants to boost the trip's morale, but according to projections Mr. House made, he has an 83.75% chance of being assassinated. Whoops. Anyway, it looks like Mr. House thought it was important to keep President Kimball alive. Mr. House ran projections on how the NCR public will react to a defeat at Hoover Dam. Overwhelmingly, they'll blame Kimball. But if Kimball dies at Hoover Dam, there's no obvious scapegoat for them to blame, so they'll blame New Vegas instead. So that means reduced tourism for up to five years. The equations are pretty complicated. Mr. House sure liked numbers. You are so misunderstood. Well, it's their loss. Forget about the president. We've got something more important to take care of. This gadget I'm handing you is called an override module. Mr. House had two of these made years and years ago. Just like him to think ahead. Take the module to the El Dorado substation and attach it to the power control terminal. I'll handle the rest. I'll use the substation to send a huge jolt of electricity to the Lucky 38. Turns out this casino has its own reactor. All it needs is a jump start. With the reactor running at full tilt, I can boost the transmission strength of the Lucky 38's command and control network. I'm talking direct tactical control of hundreds of upgraded Securitrons at vast distances. You know that's going to come in handy. Great! When this is taken care of, we'll be all set for the Legion to make its move. Enjoy all the Vegas Strip has to
We keep an eye out for Legion raiding parties. They'd love to shut down the Dorado. Stay out of the control room and enclosure, or there's gonna be trouble. Got it? All the juice from Hoover flows right through the Dorado, and we send it west to keep the home lights burning. My folks back home got lights at night thanks to what we're doing here. Only combat I've seen lately was shooting some geckos. at night thing. Aw, just when the standing... Be advised, NCR President Aaron Kimball was struck down in a cowardly attack at Hoover Dam. The strip offers many fine cocktail lounges where grieving persons may drown their sorrows. Don't you love seeing the Lucky 38 all lit up? Sign of things to come. Too bad about President Kimball and everything. But hey, stuff happens, right? Exciting news! The Legion's massing troops in a staging area east of the dam. Attack imminent! Monster of the East ready to roll! So I've been looking over Mr. House's force projections and running some calculations. It turns out there are two ways we can win this thing. Hear that? We have options! You could route the dam's power output to the facility under Fortification Hill. That will restart its reactor, just like you did with the Lucky 38. That'll wake up the Securitron army you left on standby and give us enough force to push the Legion and the NCR straight out of the Mojave. The other option is destroy the dam's generators. Without those, it's just a big bunch of concrete. The NCR won't have any reason to stick around. You don't have to decide yet. For now, all you have to do is take this override module and install it on the terminal in the power control room. Good luck. See you at the dam. Next stop, Hoover Dam, huh? When we get there, can we stop by the souvenir shop? Their beaver mascot is just precious. See you around. You must get to the control room and install the override ship.
must get to the control room and install the override chip. Let's get going. Stop right there. No one is allowed into the control room. again. So, we can blow up the dam's generators, or I could route the dam's entire power output to the fort. That'll activate us. Yes, this is going to be fun. I'm unlocking the east power plant. Hit the manual switch, then go topside and deal with the Legion and NCR.
Get some! Show yourself, and I'm... There you are! Uh-oh.
And who are you to come before me? You bear the insignia of the bear, yet you do not wear it as a soldier of the West wears it. Many graves in the East are filled with those who said as much, with braver words, not backed by strength. It is Kaiser's will this gate to the West bear the flag of the Legion. Kaiser's will shall be done. I see you fight with words, like all beneath the flag of the bear. Let us hope your skill with weapons proves greater. So you seek quarter? Terms of surrender? Our roads into NCR are hung with the bodies of those who attempted to negotiate with us. Save your speeches. We will take Hoover Dam and move forward until our feet crush the setting sun beneath them. Hoover Dam has never seen the mass strength of the East. Only legates such as Graham, who deserved the fire Kaiser blessed him with. Now I am here, and make markers of your people as the Legion carves its way west. You speak in circles. What of the East? I am the East, and I will prove it this day. The victory here shall be swift. Our forces shall take the dam, secure it, then build a road west on the bodies of the NCR. The East will hold. Once across the Colorado, nothing to rival Hoover Dam remains. Your weakness? You seek to thwart me by claiming the Legion is too strong for you? That does not mean we would not succeed. The East was a hard-fought campaign. Even now, Kaiser drew too much of the Legion's blood needed there for this. Hoover Dam is but a place. I will not have it be the gravestone of the Legion, whether quickly, or as you describe, slowly, by attrition. As for wisdom, there is wisdom in your words, woman of the West. Know that I shall return east. I shall not remain there forever. On that day, the strength of the bear shall be tested. If the West is one day filled with ones such as you, perhaps it shall be a worthy fight indeed. <laughs> My coming would have saved you, set your people free in ways they cannot see. War would have tested them, broken the weak with its violence, yet allowing the strong to arise. Violence gave you that strength, awakened you. I can see it upon your face, where two bullets left their mark. Perhaps it is unfortunate Woolpex was not here to hear your words. Something tells me you would prove more than his match. Until the day when our armies meet again, Courier, I shall wait for you on the battlefield. What's up? Caesar on the cross. Been a long time since I've seen the kind of work you've laid down today. A damn long time. 
and the screams of those Legion bastards as they kicked dirt running east like a choir of angels to my ears. Speaking of, that crazy light show over the fort? What the fuck was that? Some kind of thumb of God you'd call down? Amazing. Fucking amazing. Could use a hundred of you. Just scatter you over the east like jacks. Give those plum fucks the what for. And, um, well, <laughs> these, uh, these boys with you? <laughs> Hello there, Smiley. Guess it ain't no secret how you, uh, I say, can you ask them to put their weapons down? I was just reaching in my coat to give you a cigar. I would sooner spit on the grave of my dead mother than let some courier walk the wasteland fuck talk to me like that. Who the hell do you think you are? Looking to cash your chips to the sound of NCR bullets, huh? I can oblige. Look, I know you're riding high right now, but let me tell you, you ain't pissing on me right now. You're pissing on the bear. You've been far enough west, I'm guessing, to know how far that claw stretches. Fuck with the bear and... You want me to make tracks out of here? Head back west? Tail between our legs? No. I came for a fight today. And if you're looking to make me budge, you better have a damn good left hook or I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. But I wasn't expecting a fight when I came up here. And now that we're talking, I don't like the sound of things. Do you know what you're doing? Making a nation like you think you're doing ain't like chowing down on a pile of fancy lad snack cakes. Think you got the guts to carve out a frontier? Build towns, protect the roads, run supplies, train troops? <sighs> Hell. Can't believe we got suckered by some road jockey. Should have watched the flank while Caesar's best was making all that noise. I know what those robots of yours can do on a bad day, and I'm not eager to toss lies at them just to make a point. But if you're taking this place, you better hope you can hold it. I'll give my superiors my opinion, but I don't think they're going to listen. So if NCR comes at you, and it will, pray you're ready. I promise you, our situation's reversed, I'd see you hang. What the hell? No, get away from me, you goddamn TV on wheels. There you are. You did a super job wrapping things up. And I'm not just saying that because I have to. I didn't want to make a big deal about this until after we won, but, well, I found some code snippets in one of Mr. House's data banks that will let me, um, reprogram my personality to be a little more assertive, basically. So that's what I'm going to be doing, and it's going to take me a while, so it'll seem like I'm offline. But don't worry, everything will be okay. I've updated the Securitron's targeting parameters so they know what to do. Vegas will be protected. So that's where I'll be, off making a few changes. And I, I guess I'll see you around. 
We accomplished a lot together. It was fun. Take care. And so the courier who had cheated death in the cemetery outside Good Springs cheated death once again, and the Mojave Wasteland was forever changed. The courier, with the aid of Yes Man, drove both the Legion and the NCR from Hoover Dam, securing New Vegas' independence from both factions. With Mr. House out of the picture, part of the Securitron army was diverted to the Strip to keep order. Any chaos on the streets was ended. Quickly. Chaos became uncertainty, then acceptance with minimal loss of life. New Vegas assumed its position as an independent power in the Mojave. Supporting the ideals of independence, the courier was recognized as the woman responsible for a truly free New Vegas. She ensured that Mr. House's tyranny was broken and that neither Caesar's Legion nor NCR would ever gain control over New Vegas. With little law left in the wasteland, the Brooms continued to defend themselves against the prospectors and scavengers invading their territory. Hoping to lead the Mojave Brotherhood down a new path, Veronica sought to learn from the thriving cultures of the desert. Absent a firm solution, Veronica's expression of frustration with Brotherhood leadership would lead to her banishment. She ended her days a wandering tinker. After the courier ensured New Vegas remained free, the followers found that independent Vegas was even more unstable and violent than before. Old Mormon Fort became excessively burdened by the influx of patients, struggling to provide even the most basic of services. With New Vegas' independence formally declared, Good Springs thrived. More travelers stopped by Good Springs on their way to and from the Strip, and the locals grew prosperous from the traffic. The kings retained their control of Freeside, and while they continued to favor the needs of locals, they tolerated the citizens of the defeated NCR. Armed with a wide array of improvised explosives and stolen weapons, the Vault 19 powder gang tormented the Mojave Wasteland for years. Citizens of the NCR were favorite targets, and they always suffered the worst fates. And so the courier's road came to an end, for now. In the new world of the Mojave Wasteland, Fighting continued, blood was spilled, and many lived and died just as they had in the old world. Because war, war never changes. <laughs>